regular meeting of the Henry School District Board of Education in session. Um, just as a notification, we did have an executive session prior to uh, tonight's meeting in regards to contract um, personnel items. Uh, we'll call this one here. Sure. Mr. Aguirre, present. Mr. Richard Belt, Mr. David Bradley. What back? Did Rusty call in? No, no, no. Yet. Okay. Uh, I'm here. Thanks. Mr. Nathan Fuller, present. Mr. Stephen Holland, here. Ms. Gail Holland, here. Mr. Rick Spinelli, here. Mr. Wayne Wentz, here. Mr. Larry Stern, here. Eight present, one absent. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to turn over to the apparent. Mr. Buffington is not here this evening. All right. He's in a much warmer place. <laughs> <season. laughs> uh, so I'd like to turn it over to them just to uh, talk about the, the high school and uh, the marching band and the different programs and some of the accolades that they have received over the years. Thank you. Um, tonight we are here to highlight the triumphs of the Hyden Area High School Band Program. Year in and year out, the band, led by Mr. Ryan Buffington, provides a musical counterpoint to the school's athletic program. We can all agree, whether it's the soaring notes of Cherokee, the classic energy of Barbara <coughs> Ann, or the moving chords of the school's alma mater, the powerful performances raise the spirits and pulse of our fans <coughs> and students alike. Our band plays with such passion and heart, they regularly draw praise from parents and students at the schools we tight and compete to get, as well as other community members. Comments such as, as an alumni of the Pottsville Area Marching Band, I just wanted to compliment your incredible program. The Indian Pride Band performed in Pottsville this evening, and it was an awesome show from beginning to end. The sound, the movement, the interaction with the crowd, all amazing. Thank you. Keep it up. From last year's marching band season, wow, what a band. Your kids rocked at the Marion Bay last night. Jaw-dropping performance. You were playing and moving in the stands the entire game. Hats off to you, your director, staff, and school for a fantastic and dedicated group of friendly and fun young men and women. And finally, from our most recent trip to Nashville, nice job kids, you all represented the Titan Pennsylvania very well. Our band receives praise in person and throughout our various social media platforms regularly. Were that the extent of the band's impact, we would have every reason to celebrate this. But they go above and beyond to represent the school, its student body, staff, school board, and even the surrounding community across the country at every opportunity. Our band members were the point performers for the Carbon County Veterans Day Parade here in the Titan this past November. They are perennial favorite to honor our nation's heroes and will continue to do so at the Weissport Armed Forces Day Parade on May 16, 2020. Over the past several years, the band's performances have taken them up and down the East Coast. During their April 2019 trip to perform with the Grand Ole Opry, our band earned the coveted RCA Recording Artist status, an achievement that some can only dream of. Recently, the band brought its musical acumen to the masses at the Lehigh Valley Phantoms hockey game, where we performed pre-game as well as the Canadian National Anthem, O Canada. If you haven't had the chance to see or hear our performance from the hockey games or any of our other performances, visit yeah. our Facebook page and check it out. Going forward, the band has set their sights on performing at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida for an international audience in the spring of 2021. While their outstanding performance and representation bring great credit to the school and the community, the band program also has a deep and long-lasting <coughs> impact upon each and every student participant. Our members our band members continually compete and conquer at all levels in county, district, regional, and state festivals. These festivals are the playoffs of musicals. Three of our band members will be attending district band this year. Abigail Hoppus, who has attended all four years. A first-time attendee, Roger Pompasello, and Calvin Mahalik as a third-year returnee. <coughs> On a side note, Calvin has attended regional bands for the past two years and has placed first at District Jazz in last year's competition as well as this year. <coughs> These accomplishments, as well as all of our other band members' performances, will be some of the shining moments our students will remember throughout their lives. If you don't think it sticks with our students, take a note next year of just how many alumni show up to play with the band on one special night. While you are at it, take a moment to ask these alumni, as well as our <coughs> students, 
how music has impacted them in their lives, and how it will play into their future. In closing, please join me in saying thank you to our band, our director, Mr. B, the musical staff throughout the district, and <coughs> to you, the school board, for your, without your continued and full support, this might not be possible. Hashtag so undefeated. <laughs>
you know, to my daughter, that this guy didn't know about it, you know? But this was, this was the bus, just the bus statement was... You know, Several parents came up to me and told me that this child had made a threat for my daughter. On the bus? On the bus. Not at, okay, I just wanted to make sure. And what bus number? Bus 14. Thank you. Excuse me. Besides coming here today and talking to Mr. Sedlin, yes. how else did you record or document, I should use the term, what took place? Did, did, did. I, uh, my wife actually came home and told me what happened, and she was very frantic. She was that upset that she could come to tonight's to meeting. And I fully respect that. I mean, I'm, I told her that she shouldn't come. Yeah. There's a process within our district. Part is that you mentioned to the building principal, you mentioned it to the superintendent of the school, and in the event that you're unhappy with the situation, you file what they call a formal written complaint okay. with, with the board and the, and the uh, superintendent. Um, you, you are correct that, that one of the things that is unique in this marketplace of a school, government school, yeah. is that without a victim, there is no investigation. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, everybody at the bus stop saw her last year, head bumped my daughter in the head. Right, and without a victim, there's no investigation, and without a complaint, there's no progress. I got exactly what you're saying. I appreciate that, Grace. So, what you're telling me is next time we should report it to the cop right away. Without a victim, there is no investigation. Okay. And without a complaint, there is no process. Not a problem. And the, and the process is very well documented <coughs> in, in our school policy, which is law at the local I, level. I, I agree. 906. And you can hold all of these people accountable, which is what you want to do, and, and ourselves, which I fully respect. And I please ask you to do that. And everybody should do that on a regular basis because it's the only way to hold your government accountable. Otherwise, you're just a lobbyist, which we appreciate you coming here and speaking out. But they don't have to listen to you. I mean, they have to hear you, but they don't have to. Do my, I, I, totally agree. Agree. I just want to bring it to your attention. Oh, and I, I'm so glad you did, because we have so many of these that didn't make it to the next step, at which point we just had an executive session, and the question is, where's the complaints? Where's the victims? So. That's not what Thank you. <laughs> just to, Mr. Claypool, just so um, even though Mr. Bradley said without a victim, there's no investigation, that is correct on the police side. Uh, we don't need a victim. We just need information to start an investigation. So Mr. Bradley's comment to you is not correct. We don't need a, we don't need a victim for a investigation. The police would need a victim to go through it. But any information we get, whether it's brought to us and you want to move forward with it, we still investigate. Did, did you investigate that you pulled the tapes of this incident on the bus, Mr. Clayton? What type of investigation are you regarding? not have that discussion with Mr. Sullivan, so I can't speak. What, what was the investigation when someone has... So, okay. me, yeah, what did they do? Can I ask you one question? Both of Okay. So, what you're telling me is I should wait till she has my daughter now. I like that. No, no boy, absolutely that. not. The, okay. the, the, the that's what I'm is, at. No, the victim, bear with me. The victim is one that harassment first starts. So that makes that child the victim. And, and the perpetrator of that can also be in harm's way. Right? I we totally all, agree. Right. So the idea is, once you report it, that creates the investigation. Prior to that, it doesn't. And the investigation that you want to have and hold them accountable to, that's a function of whether or not you have rights to be in part of that investigation. What should that investigation have? What is the due process? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure it's exactly I know. It's None of us are. Well, the reason why I'm asking is because, like, okay, like this little boy, that, I mean, I heard it all over Facebook about this poor little boy that got brutalized at your school, which I really feel bad about. And uh, I just was like, well, I better bring this to somebody's attention that's a little bit more in charge. Maybe, maybe they could do something before something happens, you know? But, but the policy for harassment is any incident that's creating the victim and the perpetrator. Okay. So, so if they're calling names, picking on somebody, doing something, that's what we're supposed to be nipping this in the bud, zero tolerance. And I think that's being missed within our district. I'd like to have it checked. And we can't 
fix it if we don't know what's broken. And the problem is we're not hearing that. We're not getting that information from our administration. We're not getting that information from our investigators. We're not getting any of this information as a board. I will say that Mr. Sutton was very, very helpful though. Um, I, when I talked to him, he held it together pretty good. You know, he was very, that he was gonna look into it. But I wanted to make sure that I got brought up here so you just guys at the higher level know and you know, it's simple like yeah, simple that, you know. We have a great staff. We have a fantastic staff. But to hold those government employees accountable, we need that. Without it, they circle the wagons and it's blocked. No one knows. Senior we will hear and we will speak now. Okay. I really appreciate the opportunity for you to step up and say something. Because there is also a process that, that the state of Pennsylvania adopted from uh, uh, the recent shooting up um, north, where it said, safe to say something. Any student can use an app and say what's happening anonymously. Any parent can do that. Anybody, it's, on, it's all right online, it's available. The first sense of an incident, we can help protect these kids okay. from both sides. Thank you. Thank you, and that's scary. Thank to you. hear that someone's threatening such a heinous act. <laughs> well, she's notorious. This, this little girl was notorious for, like I said, last year she had butted my daughter. Now I know the steps that I have to do. I mean, when I asked her why you do that to my daughter, because we were standing there at the bus stop, she said, because I wanted to do it. Yes, it sucks. Thank you, Mr. Slade. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it forward. We really appreciate it. Uh, Mrs. Broman. I'm at the end. I don't have it. It's not an agenda item. Well, there's retirees on the agenda. Oh, you want it? Okay. Sure. Oh. Right? There's retirees <laughs> on the agenda. Yeah, I was going to do it after they were accepted for retiring. <laughs> so, I want to put the agenda item down. Now, I just want to take a few minutes to congratulate the future number. What number is that? People retiring. Um, <coughs> Um, all of those people I've had an opportunity to work with over many years, and they have been so dedicated to this district. They have been gracious to not, not only their colleagues, but to all the students. And I would hope that they have set an example um, for future hirees, as well as for the board to work together in a more collaborative approach. And I wish all of them the, the very, very best. And kudos to them, because they'll be hard to replace, but they need to move on to and enjoy their retirement. Right, Martha? Yes. She just saw she had 35 kids for Cody's club. She's so. already volunteered. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I just wanted to take that out. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Mr. Bradley? to the Pennsylvania School Code and the Heightened School Policy would resolve most of our issues, including this one. The examples of this board majority using a dictatorial reign, blocking stakeholders and both following directors are men. This, appear, this appears to be an attempt to wield your dictatorial discretion to silence the community. And the fact that Gail and I tried looking at these bills we asked, we begged, we pleaded. We were blocked. And here tonight, you're going to approve them. And I checked again, not a single individual on this board signed into this office 
to look at the post. So either they're not following protocol or they're not doing their job. My second thing, page 11. The president will conduct the appointment of the following positions. It's another example of the board majority and Larry Stern using his dictatorial reign, blocking stakeholders and <coughs> following directors. <coughs> appears to be an attempt to wield your dictatorial discretion to silence the community and the fact that you have no conservative, rational, logical, reasonable, stakeholder, oath-caring people on this negotiations or personnel committee. These are meetings that you guys have without any minutes. Without any discussion. It's wrong. I was people asked to be on these committees, you blocked them. You didn't have a vote. You dictated who was going to be on the committee. You feel that it's within your authority. Even if it's within your authority, just because you can, it doesn't mean you should. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Uh, Mr. Everett. Someone would make a threat to the school and the endangerment of our children, our students, and also the teachers. And the school would then need to be evacuated for the protection of the students and teachers. And of course, the police would be called, along with any other authorities needed to ensure the safety of the students and teachers. Would the High Area, <coughs> the High Area School District be built for the services rendered? Question. Not that I am aware of. Um, however, I do know there's laws in different situations where students who are arrested for making those threats, part of their fine is to reimburse the individuals who are responding. But as far as I'm aware, I don't believe for whatever. They have never built us for any type of response there. Okay. Um, and we work together very, uh, in many cases with them. And we are, more than uh, satisfied with all their efforts and services for the school district. Okay, so the person making the threats would be held accountable for, for uh, they could costs. be if they if depending on yes what those costs. Are. That's a possibility. That has happened in the past, but of course that would be up to a court to decide, not the district but or the, the borough. The the uh, example I used that would be the protocol used, correct? Uh, there are all different <coughs> situations. Uh, depending on you know how it's handled, we have our own school police officers as well now, which have the authority to arrest as well. So they would be able to you know if there's an investigation, they could assist. But not not knowing who, who the uh, perpetrator was, if that was to occur, wouldn't the proper procedure be to evacuate the school for the safety? That's, That's most important. It doesn't matter even the cost. Right. There is an investigation that takes place, and depending on the outcome of that investigation, and there could be a sample where, uh, like you said, you used <coughs> metaphors and hypotheticals, an individual student uh, was singled out, and we had information and video surveillance of an individual student, and we were able to identify that individual student. Well, while the investigation is going on in the interview with the so-called person that did this, uh, there something would go be, wrong. And there would be an investigation. Yeah, that wouldn't be, the investigation would all be part of it. The immediate right. action would be, in my opinion, would be to evacuate the school immediately because you don't know. Even if you have somebody on surveillance, they could have put that device anywhere in any of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And the threat is in another room. And there are threats that come across to different types of threats, not necessarily <coughs> that type of threat that we investigate as well. Okay. Um, are there any types of fund or monies that are put aside in consideration made to any victims of um, alleged bullying, 
or the alleged hazing and have any of those payments <coughs> made to date? Uh, there's no payments. We have services. Uh, we have social workers, and we also contract with psychologist uh, Mr. Jim Schwab, who would be able to meet with those individuals and counsel them if needed. And then we will also reference and refer payments <coughs> if they requested it for other options they have as well, if they wanted additional support services. But within the district, we have resources to offer that. But there's no payment or bill to date other than a meeting with our Okay, staff. what about the injuries that somebody mentioned earlier that there was a kid that was pretty well uh, seriously injured? There's insurance, the district has, the district has insurances for any type of accident, whether it's that or someone breaks an arm in, um, in gym class, which happens all on the playground. The district has insurance to help <coughs> offset the, you know, the cost of that. And those are all paid up to date, the insurance policies and everything that are needed? I, I them, I'm not aware of the not. <coughs> um, Did you say you're not aware that they're not up to date? I'm not aware that they weren't paid. I don't see it. You know, I've not been contacted from our insurance company that there was a bill not paid. Okay. We have access to those <coughs> records. Those are paid to be assured by the parents and the students that things are going to be covered should anything happen. If there's any questions that parents have, they contact us and then we would refer them to uh, our insurance provider. Uh, and they would be able to contact them directly and talk to our broker and then make sure that's all taken care of. That's happened. <coughs> that has happened in the past uh, for different types of accidents, accidents that happen on the school to where there was questions with their insurance and our insurance and our uh, insurance provider aided this parents in getting all that taken care of. Okay, but to clear the, the record, nobody's been paid for any injuries not that I'm aware. compensated in any way for anything that happened. Not recently that I'm aware of, no. And is anything expected to be done? I have not been contacted by an insurance company that there was a concern with payment of bills. Okay, I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on to communications. Uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I have a, a brief report. Um, January is school director recognition month <coughs> in Pennsylvania, the cornerstone of local school governance. There's actually probably 4,500 school directors who serve the Commonwealth. It's 500 public schools. Uh, these are, as everyone knows, are unpaid local volunteers. Uh, they work many hours, uh, to deal with many types of questions. I'm even up here on you know board meetings when they're out in public and events. There's a lot of times they're working and, and uh, spending their own time uh, to uh, go and check out events and different programs that are happening throughout the district. Uh, so at this time, I would like you to everyone to please join me in a round of applause for our school directors, former and past school directors. <laughs> Again, thank you for your time and, and dedication uh, to our school district. Uh, Governor Tom Wolf will present his 2021 state budget proposal on Tuesday, February 4th. Uh, we are actually awaiting what he's recommending for the special education, cyber charter school, and mental health line items. These are three uh, big areas that have been discussed. Uh, I know Peter reports a lot on them in her uh, reports as well that um, the cost for special education and the cost for cyber charter schools are huge drivers in uh, budgets. And uh, we're hoping that they're able to uh, offer some type of um, assurance that these uh, line items will continue uh, to be aided for the local school district uh, at the state uh, at the state level. And again, this is just Governor Tom's little proposal. This is not the final budget that would have to be voted on and adopted uh, by the legislator, but this is just his original proposal that will be sent then uh, to the to the senators and legislators. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Kluger. Um, finance report, Mr. Mayor Cole. No report today. Thank you. Um, my Excuse me, Larry. Larry, why are we getting our we report, this is manager, the report to the court. You got a budget that's way out of balance. You got pending tax increases, you got spiraling out of control. There's there's nobody providing oversight. Why, why are we at least getting the report? Why aren't these people getting a report? The, the reports are in our back and they're available online to so all and we are still having a uh, budget meeting on the 29th and 7th of the in this facility. And what's the anticipated uh, tax rates coming about on Wednesday? I guess that will be talking. dollars off budget, 
state's not giving any more, the federal's not giving any more. Like I said, that's us. Right. We will talk about the finances from, that they make. I said, well, we're having financial support. We've got the people here. You got $20 million coming from these people. You're $4 million short. That's a 20% shortfall. Why are you pushing it off to Wednesday? Why don't you have a report from our business manager to let the people know where their money goes? I mean, we're obviously not able to see it. Gail, I'm glad. Gail, do we have any trouble getting to see the invoices? I mean, the only agenda that says anyone that wants to see it can come in and see it, right? Members with questions or requesting a copy of any payment, please contact the business office prior to scheduling the meeting. We tried it. We were blocked. Right. And we asked Joy, how many times did we ask you? We tried to get access. And yet there's no access. And, and Robert, your name's not signed in that book. Wayne, your name's not signed in that book. Nathan, did you even try to go look at these bills before you're paying? As a Christian business leader, wouldn't you book them before you even pay them? Right? I mean, you with your company, don't you? Gail, how about you? Do you check bills before you pay them? Everything, right? Reed has already admitted you don't even pay. Larry, can you check those before you pen? Actually, Mr. Bradley, I'm back with your comments. You want to comment? Steve, tell me that you wanted to look at these bills. One of them. You're on the Fab Five. Okay. Um, as okay. I said, the finance meeting will be held on Wednesday the 29th at yeah. 7 o'clock concerning of the year to date information and perspective going forward. Go. As a business person, myself, and a director, I feel strongly that this board and this district is spiraling out of control. The lack of proper oversight and lack of financial transparency have placed the district in distress. Either massive tax increases or widespread austerity measures will be the result. <laughs> Why are you kicking this can down the road, guys? I haven't kicked the can down the road. We're having the meeting on Wednesday night. When was the meeting announced? Last week. How did you announce it? In the newspaper. Did you mention it to the board members? Once we had the meeting that was out, out there. We what, what, how did you mention it to any of the board members that this Wednesday you're having a meeting? Did anybody get an email related to this new meeting? We, didn't, about? Have, we didn't have to. You were nice enough to share it with everyone. Correct. Did you also notice that it wasn't on the calendar? How were you going to tell these people that you were having a meeting? It was just posted in the newspaper and Act 1 requires to have it before the That's the minimalist amount of effort. To announce what you're trying to <coughs> or announce right. 44 million dollars. Thank you very much, Mr. Bradley. Um, 44. What was it last year? President, Four presidents. How much I'm going to give up my report, and we're going to library report, Ms. Mahal. Thank you very much. Okay, the, li the library will be having a groundbreaking ceremony on February 19th to uh, start the admission to the library. Um, you probably have to go into the back of the library during the construction period and for a short period of time uh, while they're working on the ramp. But um, other than that, the library's open. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's exciting news to expand the library within our community. <laughs> Legislative policy, Mrs. Smelly? I have just a few things. Um, government. Governor Wolf recently announced a new campaign aimed at expanding resources and the state's comprehensive support of mental health and related health care priorities that include, among other efforts, the need for more social workers in schools, something that we already have going on here, and they have been most helpful. So I just wanted to point that out. Also, this week, the House of Representatives considered legislation sought by PSBA that allows school districts to charge fees in responding to public record requests made for commercial purposes. Uh, once a month, I get a legislative report as to what's being worked on and, and what's. It's, it's in addition to the daily edition that anyone could look at, but this is what I'm reading to you today, the things that PSBA, PSBA is working on legislatively. Also this week, PSBA presented testimony to the House Education Committee regarding House Bill 1897 that requires school districts to offer full-time cyber education programs by the 2021-22 school year. Representing the association was PSBA President Eric Wolfgang, who described the bill as a unique approach to address the serious problems in cyber charter law, but also raised concerns with the plan under House Bill 1897. 
I mention this because they don't only just take one side, as we are some, as they are sometimes accused of doing. Uh, if a bill sounds good, it's good, but if they have concerns, they will bring us up also. And finally, on, as um, Mr. Claver mentioned, on Tuesday, February 4th, Governor Tom Wolf will present his 2021 state budget proposal. PSB will provide complete coverage of the budget. A special legislative report on February 4th will deal, detail the new spending plan for education and include links to proposed subsidies. The following day, February 5th, PSBA staff will conduct a complimentary webcast for members that takes a deeper dive into the proposed budget. You can register on the PSBA website. Also look for the February 11th video edition that will feature an interview with State Budget Secretary Jen Swales. This is in your FYI packet too, um, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, title one advisor, Mrs. Bowman. <laughs> All right, now title uh, staff met on January 10th and our discussion talks about the stage media reading program for preschool parents and it's going from March the 26th, a day in April, and two in May, and possibly two in June. We're going to advertise with the kindergarten registration, which I'm assuming will, will be coming up soon in March, particularly on the website for that. Uh, we also talked about a parent faculty survey will be compiled and sent to parents of students being serviced through Title, week of March 6th through the 20th, and we're also going to do an online survey for parents and the faculty. Uh, the Parent Advisory Council will meet on March the 10th at quarter of six before the PTO meeting. We are looking for <coughs> Title I advisory people. So if anybody is interested in becoming part of the Parent Advisory Group of the Center, uh, please feel free to reach out to me or Mr. Tack, because we really want to uh, get that started again in collaboration. Our spring title night will be April 1st, and it will be Foolish Fun Night featuring a book bingo, lab obstacle course, math measuring snack station, and possible mindfulness activities. And Mr. Sutherland did report that um, K-2 will be having a program on dyslexia through the TAN, and he said the information will be very uh, informative and valuable, and that will be over two years. And our next meeting is Friday, March the 6th. And I I would appreciate as a stakeholder if some kind of finance report was done at a board meeting, even though it was just to mention the meeting coming up and what it was about on Wednesday. Because I don't know what it's about. But that's just my opinion. So I thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bowman. Um, CCTI, Mr. Bowman. The CCGI Joint Operating Committee has held two meetings since our last board meeting, one December 17th and one January 16th. Um, a number of CCTI students participated in the Skills USA competitions at the district level. 57 students competed, 37 placed, 14 of those were gold medals, and they'll proceed on the state competition. Um, likewise, 62 students attended every competition for our district, 31 of those students qualified from the state conference. Um, CCTI has sent out their 2020-21 budget uh, proposal. All member districts is asking us to vote on those. They are currently in the middle of the way to the Keystone exams. They just posted the FAFSA day for parents, um, preparing for student aid for college. Um, and then lastly, CCTI is developing a pool of potential instructors for their adult education department. Um, anyone interested should contract contact Francine Pluck at their office, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Pollard. Uh, CLIU, Mr. Wentz? Yes, uh, our regularly scheduled ICLI meeting was uh, canceled in December due to the weather and has been rescheduled for this Wednesday, January 29th. That's it. Village of Ground, Mr. Hall. We had no meeting, so there's no report this evening. Thank you. Academic affairs do not meet as well. Uh, Mr. Krauss, I'll try to see. Good evening. You all should uh, receive one of the newsletter and the packets, but I'll highlight a couple of great things going on at uh, L3C. Uh, L3C recently entered into a partnership agreement with Amazon to provide a training center and apprenticeship program for 100 employees per year to meet the growth uh, due to their new facility in Allentown. So this is a, definitely a win-win between L3C and business and, and the community as well. 
Our winter semester saw growth in credits much higher than expected. So again, uh, shows the strength of LTIC and the ability uh, to draw students into the programs there. Um, Lehigh is one of five school districts at Lehigh or um, LTIC with students that are enrolled in the early college program, which I've talked about before, where students can receive or achieve a high school diploma and an LTIC degree when they graduate from high school. Uh, last year there were 17 students. Uh, we now have 20 that are enrolled in that program and will graduate in May with both uh, certifications. I would encourage our administration and academic affairs committee to continue to stay focused on this since it must be in the program studies guide. Guidance should also be included not only to make sure the students are aware of the program, but more importantly, to provide students with adequate direction for their curriculum track so that those interested can take full advantage of this opportunity. LTRIC is also working on links to provide this information for parents as well as um, so that they can understand early on before the students get involved, you know, when they're coming into high school, uh, because there's a lot of mechanics that, that go along with the scheduling and really importance of time management for the students, because if they're taking online courses and keeping up with their regular studies, uh, that gets pretty demanding. And I'd like to congratulate the Heightens early college students that made the Dean's List, uh, Brianna Berger, Paige Gruber, Tatum Hartzell, Cornelia Perry, Rain Rims, Natasha Satarchin, Ryan Smith, and Alyssa Williams. So, great job. <laughs> and lastly, I would like to recommend that the board support the motion on the agenda this evening for the uh, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, with LTRI-C slash Teacher in the Workplace which is an agreement to participate in the CSL STEM Ecosystem Teacher in the Workplace Program. And the three key points of that are what it is, it's a professional development for educators uh, to visit work sites, visit and observe career and technical education centers, participate in project-based learning, and develop lesson plans that can be used in their schools. Um, who's involved with this? Uh, there's gonna, they're going to educate a total of 25 teachers from Carbon County. And how they're going to do that is to send these five teachers from the uh to participate in six days of programming, that's 42 hours, which will be one day a month from September to February. Um, as far as the cost, the teachers are paid for mileage through the grant, and the districts are reimbursed for substitutes for five out of the six project days. So, not a big cost for that kind of professional development. And uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Policy committee did not meet, although there are policies on the agenda with the agenda proposed by the um, policy committee and with Ms. Bowers. Um, Ms. Langer, we will get the calendar out for February with updates and start those on the rotation yeah. again of academic okay. careers and policy. Same rotation? Yeah. Athletic committee, Mr. Wentz. Okay, uh, full support of basketball teams, boys and girls are holding their own, even though they are made up of mostly underclassmen, and our girls recently had a big win over Blue Mountain. Uh, however, the big thing happening with our student athletes here at Lehigh is the Cold Cracker Wrestling Tournament, held this past Friday and Saturday at the high school and elementary center, with over 40 teams, 500 wrestlers, plus another 200 JD wrestlers. This event brought in approximately between three and 4,000 fans, which was a boost to the economy of our community. Hotels were going, <coughs> restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, all benefit from this tournament. And to quote the Times News, that it was held in our sparkly new elementary center gymnasium with all its modern amenities. I would like to thank and congratulate Rich Bromheimer Alex Zigerfus and Brett Gasker on their top 10 finishes. And uh, our county <coughs> band, uh, my wife and I have been involved with the band one way or another since 1984, when her daughter was in up to her grandson now. And uh, as long as you we have a moral majority of this board, you will never have to worry about losing music or band in our school. So and I close by once again, I always close like this. I would like to report our Lehigh Tri-Pride Band 
remains undefeated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Lois, Committee, Ms. Manawa. Okay, um, Lois, Committee, Matt, <coughs> and the, our Backpack Buddies program is continuing to provide food for, for the weekends for needy families. <coughs> it's going along very well. Um, they have a lot higher number of uh, kids eating breakfast and lunches, and, and um, the numbers are increasing for the paid lunches and the paid breakfast. So that's um, good for the program. It's going very well. <coughs> There's also going to be planning and health care. So that's coming up in, I think, May. Okay. Ms. Mahalik, um, would you like to share with us read it. what's going Go on? Ahead. No, you please read, read it. it. You're communicating with another board member during the meeting. That's against public rules. So would you please read what you're talking about? Because this goes on all the time. And, uh, and no, it does not. Read up. I'll read it then. We don't even know the part of one. Larry Reed is here standing behind Gloria. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Simply or evil. Well, why do you need to? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why, why, why do we need to be texting? Why would you text them? 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 No, it's, it's, a, it's a fact that you shouldn't be communicating via text during meetings, sir. That's all I'm saying. You're, you're assuming you text that to me? You didn't text that to me. Yes, he did. Yes, she did. So please refrain from texting. You want to? Please, please refrain. Just checking. Jeez, it's not fancy notes and Please refrain from texting each other mem as members during the meeting or anyone else in the play. Uh, specific attention to the activities that are going on within the board meeting. Not to mention Thank the fact you. that it's public information because that's a public meeting. Well, you know now. Thank you. Are you happy? Thank you. Can someone explain who Larry really is? No. We're just not no, moving forward. Let's okay. all do approval of minutes. No. Okay. Need a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the November 25th, 2019 regular meeting of closure number one. So moved. Mr. Wentz. Second. Mr. Holland. <laughs> Then we'll yeah. corrections. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the December 24th reorganization meeting. December 4th reorganization meeting. So moved. Mr. Bowler? Second. Mr. Wentz? Questions, corrections? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I On the financial matters, I need a motion and a second to approve the Height Mary High School and the Height Mary Middle School activities funds from November and December and closure number three. Oh. Mr. Holland? Second. Mr. Spinelli? Questions on those statements? I have one. Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. We were only provided the statement and not actually uh, the details behind it. We did not have access to review it. Therefore, I will say no because of the fact that we uh, didn't have the details. And I'm wondering why that's not part of the report. This report has been the same um, that I'm aware of since for, for, well, I've been here since 2010. I believe the reports have been the same since going back to 2010. The, the examples of this board majority using a dictatorial reign of blocking stakeholders and overwhelming directors are many. This appears, appears to be an attempt to wield your dictatorial discretion and silence the community. I think you should give me information, sir. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Yes, have it. I need a motion and a second to approve the payment of bills for December and December 2019 and January 2020 for a total of $6,429,732.26. So moved. Mr. Wentz? Second. Mr. Benelli? Comments? I highly suggest we table this payment of the bills until we have a financial report and a financial meeting, which will be on Wednesday. And hopefully, between now and Wednesday, we can give the board members access. The results are obvious. The lack of transparency, lawful transparency, and board oversight is destroying this district. Simple, humble compliance to the Pennsylvania School Code and LAFD policy would resolve most of the issues, including this one. 
as these five give them blind trust in the very administration we were all elected to oversee, the minorities obstructed from lawful, from their lawful responsibility to hold the government administration accountable. Any further comment? All those in favor of paying the bill signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 By three, I have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the following reports expenditure reports, expenditure by object reports, revenue summaries, treasurer's reports, which include general fund, capital reserve fund, capital projects fund, and include service fund. Motion and a second, please. Okay. Mr. Holland. Second. Ms. Spinelli. Questions on those reports? How, how did you guys approve pay six point four million dollars without seeing it? How do you know anybody? You know why do you question other people? Did you see them? I looked at the bills. What'd you look at? These things? Yes. That's not the bills. <laughs> right? I had That's not the fucking team. That's not the fucking team. That's not the fucking team. I don't have to justify my actions to you. <laughs> you know, but you should have justified to them, right? You should. That's a dictatorial reign again. They don't have access to. The business manager, you do. They don't have access to the superintendent, you do. They have access to us. It's our job to do it, sir. Thank you. Any further comments on the reports? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. Opposed? Nay. Ayes have it. I need a motion and a second to approve the payment of the following project of the general fund for a total of $25,000 concerning the elementary center from Low Bar Incorporated. Application for payments under 28 and 29. The closure six. So moved. Mr. Wentz. Second. Mr. Bowler. Questions? All those in favor of paying the bill, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the exemptions per, per, per capita and or occupational tax per the tax list. The closure number seven. So, Mr. Bradley, Second. Mr. Fuller, <coughs> any questions on those exemptions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. We have a motion and a second to refund the following occupational taxes for 2019 and 2018. The amount of number one to Mr. Joseph Lesko, 137.50, number two. Same amount, Mr. Joseph Lesko, number three for tax year 2018, the amount of $122.50 again. And a motion and a second, please. So moved. Mr. Wentz? Second. Mr. Holland? Questions on the refunds? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the agreement with Pediatric Therapeutic Services and we had every school district for school based therapy services through June 30th, 2020. So the motion is second, please. Second. Second. Mr. Nelly, Mr. Bowler, questions on those services? Mr. Bradley? Oh, sorry. What's the historical value of this contract? Uh, this is the first contract we're entering into, and the issue is, is that we're having a hard time finding a school psychologist. Uh, so because of the deadlines that are required to meet, uh, we will use these services to help us meet those deadlines for educational testing uh, when it comes to the students being referred special education. Uh, we've hosted uh, for over a year now for an additional school psychologist and have been successful for finding someone. Mm -hmm. And the reference in the uh, Northern Lee High School District is one of the references that also that currently uses this district as well. Right, so we're trying to get a contract. Do we know what the value was last year? This is the first year we've done it. We, we, so, but we had these services provided by someone else who required to We had a school psychologist. Right. We had three at one time. What was the value of that? It would be a salary, whatever that psychologist was being paid. Right. There's a value to that. What was the value? I don't have the amount that that individual's making when they left us. I'd I, I go to you. Shane, could you please explain how you like kind of, as a business person, good old Christian business person, like, I gotta look at things before I do What are we doing here? Do you know? I mean, put on the spot. They're not, they're not, you know, you tell them. No, there's a value. There's a value to this. There's an expected value. There's a cost to them to provide the service. A year of trying to hire somebody, we can't find somebody? That's correct. That, 
somewhere online, doesn't your employee raise their hand and say, hey, I'm having trouble finding somebody, maybe we should change how we advertise uh, We have advertised for over a year in many different uh, areas. We've reached out to colleges. And we've failed all these times, and yet you know what? Um, you would uh, take notice, every school district pretty much this area is in the same boat. I believe East Charlesburg itself is advertised for three schools and colleges. It's just so how can you raise your hand to your board that you know, you're some coordinate employee, you raise your hand to the board and say, I'm having trouble here. Board members, so it's me, and see if we can solve this problem of finding something. We have a lot of people in this room that are really smart. We've discussed this before. We've discussed this before. We've discussed it. We can take their input. Have you ever asked them? They have input. I bet they know. That's what we're here to do. We're being compliant with Pennsylvania. PDE requirements we need to have school psychologists. Or we went from three, we only have one currently on staff. Right, but they might help us. Does anyone in the, the audience know? I mean, not just this audience here, but I mean, the community that's writing this chat. As public servants, we should reach out. We should seek their input. School policy 011. Okay. We're Thank not you. dictators, sir. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Bradley. You don't like that comment? I how about don't I have any comment How about I make a motion that before we do this, we ask the public. We table it and ask the public. Why don't we ask for some help? For school psychologists? Yeah, ask them for some help. How would we recommend that? Give them a report. Create some paper, make a report, say this is how we advertise, we got, we're not successful. This is what we did, we're not successful. Please help us be successful as a school, as a community, and we can help. I think we had this discussion, I believe. Like yeah, we still didn't solve the problems. There's we sent the uh, information the out to the board uh, as well of how they're advertising the postings. Yeah, did, did we ask the people? Did we use robocalls? Did we ask the people? Did we have a special meeting? Did we call a special meeting to okay. make sure that they're ready to solve it? I have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor of the motion, let's signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. You guys have it. In a motion and a second to appoint the following delegates to the Carver County Tax Collection Committee delegation resolution. Right. We'll team the chair and the sole alternate delegate, Mr. Wagner. In a motion and a second, please. So moved. Mr. Bradley. Second. Mr. Finale. Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. In a motion and a second to approve the contract with Dr. Patrick Henley. D.O. and Dr. Vanessa Rice, D.O. for the February 1, 2020 to June 30, 2020 contract. Um, paid as follows, $6,000 stipend with a signed contract and per exam fee of $7 per physical exam and $3 per scoliosis examination as recommended by the school nurse in closure number 10. Second. Second. Nelly, Mr. Wentz, <coughs> SUL Services. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nice yes, have it. In motion and a second to approve the Hyatt Mary School to offer winter credit recovery program for students at a cost not to exceed $150 per class using the eLearn 21 system. There will be no cost to the district. Motion and a second, please. Mr. Holland, Mr. Palmer, any question on the winter credit recovery program, Mr. Bradley? So, the winter credit recovery program tells me that they're lacking this credit. It's kind of like summer school but winter school. That's correct. Yes. That's, that's what we're doing. That's correct. And how many students do we feel are in this system here? There might be okay. 10 to 15 students that might access that. Maybe. 10 to 15? Maybe. And there may be more than one subject, though, per student. Okay. On the so there's 10 to 15 students that Maybe. who are potentially not being at standard. credit risk. Correct. Yeah. And they're going to ask for special help. Mm -hmm. okay. They're not getting special help. They're yep. going to do credit recovery for a course that they potentially recovery. failed. So that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they, they already failed or they potentially failed? No, they have failed. The marking are... period is ended second. The marking period is ended third. Marking period. So the list will come out as soon as this is approved of those students that have failed yeah. and are at risk. Correct. And that's 10 out of how many? Uh, junior, senior. I mean, it's, it's open to any student ninth through 12th grade. So you're so talking 700 grade. plus. Kids, correct, that have potential to Right, so we're talking about 800 kids, maybe? Plus. Okay. Actually, it's open to our law students as well, so 750. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Rough estimate. So a couple percent of our children are not making the grade. Right. Is that a metric we track to do to our board? 
We have not. We have not. No, but we can easily give that state, number. The state does, and I saw that. Yeah, we, we report that. Far, we report that they're failing and they don't graduate. Correctly. We're missing a high percentage of our students. We're falling below this one. This is graduation. This is not. I understand. I'm not talking about keystone testing. So I understand they need to get extra credits. These credits to meet the graduation requirement. Right? Yet our graduation requirement. There's a reason it's called eLearn 21 system. I mean, there's only 21 credits you're supposed to need for the state. Right. eLearn 21 is our online program that we use with our lobby program. So our credit recovery will take place through that. We have 28 credits in the high school that our students need to meet. Right. They so eLearn 21, 21 is the name of the system that we're using. And that comes from where? Is they the online? The state, it's a statewide program? The intermediate. The intermediate. Unit. Intermediate, okay. So the intermediate unit has this eLearn 21. Just coincidentally, then I guess the state requirement is 21 credits, correct? For, for graduation, I think the eLearn 21 is IU 21. IU That's fine, okay. So then, but the state requires 21 credits, correct? Yes, correct. And we require 28. Correct. Mm -hmm. So are these students that are 10 to 15 that are going to go to winter school <coughs> to meet up the requirements, do they meet the state requirement but not meet the LASD requirement? Can we check that or? That is possible. It's possible. But no matter what, if you mandate the this LSD, board, the LSD requirements is you mandated, mean. right? This this board decided that they need 28 credits to graduate, and if they don't get their 28, they got to go to winter school. No. They don't meet the requirements. They're either not going to graduate, or they got to make them up. Well, it's. If they didn't, for if they had eight credits they were taking as a freshman and, and failed one of them, they could take this as a recovery to get back on track. So it could be after eight credits. Yeah, but they need one these credits to recover. Or they can continue yeah. to make eight. Or, or this board can decide that we're going to use the state standard okay. and make sure they meet that requirement, correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. And it helps our students and it gives them more opportunity to go to what Mr. Krauss described as LTIC getting their getting their college degree, they can, they can be getting college credits instead of high school credits. That's correct. Theoretically. Theoretically, but any student past sophomore year can apply to LCIC to take a dual enrollment type credit right. or as well apply to our college scholar if they meet their criteria. Why don't we have all our students try to <coughs> They have LCIC doesn't mind. The two-year college program, again, which I emphasized at the last meeting for you, there's right. criteria. So they have to meet a GPA standard and they have to be proficient or advanced under PSSAs, and they as well have to take the LTRIC entrance exam and perform the set score based by LTRIC, not by us, LTRIC. If they meet those standards, they can obviously apply to the College Scholar, and we encourage all of our students, um, as Mr. Sure, Press, yeah. I believe mentioned, there's, there's 20 combined 11th and 12th grade students doing that. Um, as you said, eight of those 20 make deeds less, so they're doing well. But that's all the ones we can get past this those bar to try to get there? chose to do that, so I, I'd like to motion them. I think you have a great opportunity and I'm Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is happened. In a motion and a second to approve the agreement between Lancaster and Lehman Intermediate Unit 13 in the High Ferry School District for the Dyslexia Screening and Early Literacy Intervention Pilot Program Expansion. Closer number 11. Mr. White. Second. Mr. Fowler? Questions? This, uh, this is a new program. This is a uh, 15, this is a grant that we received and the pass through comes to this intermediate unit for this program, so that's why we have to have an agreement um, with them. So the, the uh, IU the funding 13 goes, is the administrator yep. of the grant. Yes, and it goes through them and then the money from the <coughs> IU is then presented to the school. Thank you. Any further questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We need a motion and a second to accept the letter. Just for a second here. If we look at the next one, two, three, four, five, five motions, can we put that as a block and build them as a content item? No, I think I'd rather do that. I mean, I'll save some time. <coughs> There's a lot of people here that want to get an opportunity to speak. We'll go through them rather quickly, Mr. Brad, because there probably won't be any discussion on these exceptions. I, I, would, I would agree. Why don't we just do them all five at once? Except for some of them. I think we should recognize yeah. each individual yeah. uh, donor. Absolutely. You don't think they'll be recognized? No. 
Sorry, go ahead. I have a do question. Your, do your thing. I mean, oh, I'm on mute. About the dyslexia screening, is this something you want to do potentially, or is it something you're currently doing? There's a grant. There's a grant that we receive, so our teachers have been going to training, and then this is something that we're going to. So. Okay, because last year, and, and the school was great, um, and they tested my child for all types of different things, and we went up to Schnecksville, and they tested her for auditory processing disorder. The woman had said that she recommended me taking her to the dyslexia. Yes, but it, it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous to try. So what I'm asking is, so this is to, if you find students that are dyslexic, we'll be able to help them here? Is it's that what you're saying? It's a screening and then we can start the process. So, so we're finally going to be able to help the dyslexic kids in our area. If there's, there, there's already, so this is an additional screening to, the, to that, to their testing like for special education, if that's what you're referring but to. But I was told they didn't test them for dyslexia. Here. That's correct. This is a totally separate. So we're so finally going to get this. This is the first time we had it, yes. And then, I know, like you said, it's the first time. So if we get this and a child is diagnosed because, you know, special people have to diagnose them for, with dyslexia, what are we planning to do for them? Well, then our teachers are trained now to how to, to work with it and also identify it. So we're getting our lower level teachers. This is part of it. Is right. The training that going so will this be incorporated with Title I or it will be its own separate entity? I don't think it's going to be there. Yeah, I'm looking at Patty because I... Yeah, but it's, good. it's separate from Title One. Mm -hmm. Title One is more of the uh, right. reading and math type remediation types. Then this is just this is strictly for dyslexia. Okay, so my next question is: Is this only for the elementary center? Or is this going to be? It's, it's for the elementary center. So then the kids that get pushed through to middle school, they, that's a missed opportunity. I don't. I'm not sure. If this you have dyslexia, the well, and, this is the screening. Right, right, but if they're not screened because we don't have it now. Mm -hmm. And they go to the middle school next year, they can't be helped. They're gonna get. They're gonna get. I they're gonna fall I through the make cracks. Sure this screening is for early intervention. I believe this program is only. I'm looking at Mr. Tack. K one, two. I believe. It's K through two. Yeah, it's early intervention. So it's then the older kids. This program is only. Kids. So they're gonna fall through the cracks, unfortunately. No, so. Okay. Thank you, though. I think it's a great yeah. program. I mean, this is Need a motion and accept a second to accept the donation of the general fund of seven thousand dollars from the Bowman Town Drive and Fund. Uh -huh. Second, Mr. Bradley. Any questions, comments? Just again that this, they continue to support, you know, support the district. We will uh, send a later uh, letter of thanks to them. Uh, they continue every year, even sometimes more than once a year to offer. And, and from what I recall previously, it's always going to uh, dedicate into more environmental funds. That's a yeah. classroom. That's part. Of it. Any further comments? All those in favor signify by saying. I have a question if I may ask for a uh, granddaughter of mine. With this, uh, like having dyslexia, if that is suspected, is there literature that can be obtained to, to uh, as to uh, what you have to do to go about having this person tested or recognized? For early intervention? For, what I will do is I have your, your number from, I believe it's on the the sheet that you filled out earlier. Okay. I will have either Mr. Tack or actually Mr. Several of our school psychologists reach out to you directly uh, to let you know more information. All right. Yep. Thanks. Mr. Tack's actually here, so maybe I'll touch base with him even before you leave. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Sir. Any questions, comments on the donation? I would just like to say it's a repeat donation from Brazil. I to appreciate their support of the Five One program. It's the fifth one this year. Thank you very much. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. A motion and a second to accept the donation to the general fund of $250 gift card from Target to be used at the Beehive Area Elementary Center. A motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Wentz, Ms. Fidelli. Mm -hmm. Any comments on the donation? Again, I thank you to Target. I'm not sure how they reached out to us to. Um, Designate through a parent contact. I'd like to thank that parent and uh, I'm sure the money will be well used at the elementary center. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Make a motion and a second to accept the donation to the general fund of $250 from the VOTAC Under the Helmet Foundation to be used for the Heighton Area High School Veto Club Workshop. Mr. Wentz? Second. Mr. Hollins? Um, Ms. Holland, just a little bit on the Abedium Club, please. Sure. The Abedium Club was founded by Ashley Studi, founded in Lancaster on the premise of I Got Your Back. 
um, due to uh, mental health and suicide awareness. So the high school Beano Club started several years ago prior to me getting there. Um, kind of struggled in the up and running of just advisors and who was managing that. Um, so with our social, with additional social workers, they have kind of spearheaded it with our students and they will be attending a workshop um, to just refresh our current students that are participating. It's students again, 9th through 12th, 12th grade. Uh, they are constantly touching out to many of the other students in the building, seeking help, offering counseling, and connecting them. They meet frequently um, and just doing activities and community-based stuff to, to really just look out for the students and their mental wellness. Exactly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. In a motion and a second to accept the greater donation to the general fund of $1,392 from the United Way of the Greater Lehigh Valley for Girls Group G2. So moved. Second. Caller, Mr. Bradley. Again, Ms. Holly, could you get a little bit on the Girls Group? I uh, G2. High school or? I believe this one may donation may be for the middle school at this middle point, school? and this is a continuation. So, <coughs> previously, Mrs. Miller again had um, some of our girls in the absenteeism club that were missing school and attendance issues, and they were attending a course card as an incentive okay, yeah. for coming to school and being on time. G2, though, will stand for, if she builds on that, will be it's, it's girls plus. Um, so, it can include girls and boys at you know, in buildings, and they're going to incorporate some course farm. Um, and as well to do an incentive for those kids, actually, um, she's doing a mindful group with some of our seniors, and they're targeting the students in the top 10% of the class and plan on doing an initiative with them and, and giving them a little incentive for it. Thank you for your proper explanation. Appreciate that. Sure. Well, any further questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Need a motion and a second to accept the notice of termination of the lease between Bethany, Bethany Lively and Church and the Hagnary School District for the use of the Hagnary Middle School as of March 31st, 2020. Closure number 12. So moved. So Wentz. Second. Mr. Holland. Any questions on that termination agreement? Mr. Bradley. I received a copy of the termination agreement. It talks about uh, that they were two years in and it was, I believe, it was a five year contract. Five year lease. Is that correct, Mr. Cleaver? Uh, I'm not aware of the, how long the lease was okay. for. So if your this board's just approval for the termination. I understand that, but if your board's going to be reviewing a lease agreement, they should at least have a copy of that lease agreement, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't part of the package. I looked it up. I, I believe it was a five-year. I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Can anyone, anyone here confirm that they saw what this lease agreement was for? Mm -hmm. Maybe? No one? Okay. Let's move forward. So it was about 30 grand a year. You're two years in. That's three more years left at 30 grand. That's about a $90,000 change in at least $90,000. I checked and I found out that the tax rates that you put on these people was about that much. You know, that's what it took, the district took me. Now they're short by about $4 million, right? So this $90,000 is important. So I think that this church is asking for a favor of this government in exchange for breaching a written contract in which the church gave their word, right? Now, I agree with the idea, right, that we're being kind to a church and obviously a prolific charitable organization in our community. It's huge, right? I get that. But as a negotiator, with ninety thousand dollars laying on the table to allow them out of the lease, so that they can buy our school that they're using, which we love, and they're going to donate the soccer field apparently, so that they can be used their own, but they can be used by the community members, which is fantastic. I love it. Um, do you think we could ask them for anything in exchange for this $90,000? And the thing I was hoping for them to do would be to lobby this board in favor of helping some of the immoral ones learn how to keep their word and honor their oath of office. Do you think that would be wise that we can use their, like, we're going to do them a favor. Maybe they can do us a favor. They can come here and help us understand that you look at bills before you pay them for the benefit of the stakeholder, you follow 
school policy 011, you ask the stakeholder. Maybe you, maybe you give out the, you follow Pennsylvania school code 518 and you make sure that the board can see the, the records. I mean, I'd like to see that as part of this motion. Thank you. Any further comments? I have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor of accepting the notice of termination between Dudley Wesleyan and your school district, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstain. You guys have a motion and a second to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Panther Valley School District and the Highbury School District for non public student transportation. Motion and a second, please. Mr. Holland? Second. Mr. Bradley? Questions over the um, agreement for non public student transportation. Are we going to get records of the drivers, obviously, and, and have documentation? Any, yes, any new driver references on file. And you're going to allow your board forward to, to review that we have those records? Uh, from the they, are, safety records? they are presented, we have them. The board does not review them, though. There's personal information on them. For the driver to ensure that they meet the requirements? We get all that information. I know. Them. My question is, are you going to allow your board to ensure that these drivers meet those requirements? Any new driver goes through us to make sure all those requirements are met and recommendations made to the board, but no, you do not view them. Do you have a list of the drivers as they come through and say, we're having a driver and therefore they meet this requirement? The, Prior to hiring them. The school bus driver, we do not hire them. We acknowledge that they're here. Are here. So, Mr. so the, the issue is, is that a school bus driver that is presented to us from our contracting company has to go through and have all the correct paperwork in order to be presented to the board. Same as a coach or a teacher. Right. What verification process do we have other than you? The same thing you have when we hire a teacher, that all their clearances are up to date and that they're correct. You're making my point exactly. Other than yourself, they're what right. verification do we have? This board cannot abdicate this authority to you alone without any verification. We have a clear trust, trust issue. Can I ask a question? Does the board, did the board, do the directors yearly, do they sign a confidentiality policy that anything that's presented to them with material, no. uh, per, per, uh, uh, personal information is kept personal and if not, it's a violation of board policy? They, they do not. Expulsion from the board. They do not. And they can't be removed either yeah. from the board for that kind of activity. They can be sued civilly. Yeah, and the school board can be sued, uh, but that type of confidential information cannot be. Well, I don't know. Mr. That's, Bradley, it's not public information until they are an actual employee. So, as you posted my private information, when I was not yet an employee of the district, you put me personally at risk. And I was how, how not a public risk? employee at that point. How did you feel that is risk? not any of your concern. Okay. Okay, I got a motion and a second uh, for a motion R. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. In a motion and a second to approve the memorandum of understanding between with the High Carbon Community College and the Lehigh Nearing School District for Teacher in the Workplace 2019-2020 school year and closure number 14. Second. Mr. Malley? Second. Mr. Fowler? Any questions on the program explained by Mr. Krause? Part, part of this too, once it is complete, we will ask the teachers who you know, took part in this program to come in and do a, a short presentation to the board about where they were and the activities that they took place. Thank you, Mr. Peter. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We need a motion and a second to approve the elementary school after school remediation support program in English language arts and math. The program will be for students in grades two through five and will start on Monday, March 2nd and finish on Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. It will be held Monday through Friday through Thursday, run from 3.15 to 4.30. The cost will not exceed $9,500 and funding is through the Title I program and no transportation is provided. So moved. Mr. Wentz. Second. Mr. Holland. Questions on the remediation program? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the annual tax collector's reports for East Penn Township, Franklin Township, 
the Hyken Borough, Paragon Borough, Mahoney Township, and Weisport Borough. These reports are all filed in the administration office for your review. All those in favor say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Need a motion? And a second, please. So moved. Mr. Weitz? I'll second, and I did review these today. So it seems that our tax collection is as it always has been in my 90s. Nothing has changed. Any further questions, Mr. Bradley? I did not receive a copy of these yet. We tried getting them. They used to be provided to the board openly, transparently, lawfully transparent, and here we're being blocked. And um, we went to the courthouse and we checked how many times this district had sued someone for lack of payment, even for a small amount under a water up for lack of payment. We have a very litigious district that I believe is spending more on fees, or at least the community is paying more on fees, than they're collecting. As it, and if you count your constituents part of the pie, which they are, you would recognize that our job is to seek their input. So before you hire somebody, you can seek their input. Before you, you want to make sure that any information that, that community of that pool of information has can be provided to us. So I think you should keep publishing these, not just holding them on file, in a file that we don't have access to. Apparently, read it today. Now, if you took access to these files, did you check any of the bills when you were in? No. I, look at, I told you before I look at the bills, line by line. Look up the company, see what they do, so I know what they do. The ones I know from last month and last year and the year after that, I know. I know what they do, I know what the amounts are. I told you this before, David. What, what is the amount that you came across at the courthouse when you checked it? The number, 24 pages. No, the amount, the, the cost. 24 pages of litigation. We, they, we don't get an access to that cost, so you have to go to the business manager. Although, if you let me see the bills, we can have access. Yeah, I can answer that question, yeah, please. Yeah. And it would be easy to see. The report off is the... But, you know, you did a comparison financially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we so don't, what is the cost? You're saying you have the cost to do that comparison financially. Yeah, you, you do. So when you, no, you. Not, no, not yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, right? Believe me. We're spending more than we're pulling it. The, the 24 pages of litigation that this district went through, the 24 pages, some of them went all the way to court and, and actually took a lien for them to pay. So they not only had to pay the couple hundred dollars that they were behind, they also had to pay legal fees and, and court fees. And everything. You're dragging them through the mud when they're, when they're at their most vulnerable spot where they're having trouble meeting the duck. All you have to do is make a phone call and say, hey, prior to spending this money, why don't we collect it or why don't we Put it on a process where we can collect it. Because right now, even if you collected every penny that you got, you're still $4 million okay. behind. They're going to be needing to pay for it. You already answered my question, Mr. Brad. Thank you very much. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah motion and a second. All of I have you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Okay. All right. Aye. Well, hey. guys have it. Can you please send me my copies, please? They're on report on file. Please provide them to me. Ms. Stanhope, can you please send them to me? Okay, no one's going to help out that. Can I please get a second to a motion that these reports are actually provided to the directors? Thank you. I'll second it, but I'm not part of your board. I'll second it. You know what? Take my seat. Take my seat. Stay with me. Okay, on the personnel. We need a motion and a second to approve the attached list of candidates for 2019-2020 substitute list pending clearances. Enclosure number 15. So All right. So moved. All right. Two seconds. Two seconds. Russell. Any questions on the substitute list pending clearances? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. Need a motion and a second to approve the athletic hire as recommended by the athletic committee and the extracurricular hire for the 2019-2020 school year. Enclosure number 16. So. Mr. Holland. Second. Mr. Wentz. Questions on the athletic the extracurricular or athletic hires for the 2019-2020 <coughs> school year, Mr. Bradley? I firmly believe. Firmly believe. 
that you guys are going to give your blind trust to the very administration that all of our board was elected to oversee. And this minority board is being obstructed from the lawful responsibility to hold this government administration accountable. Here you have hires that you're still under investigation for athletics and issues and problems across the board. Significant, painful problems. When we have this many serious injuries, instances of bullying, hazing, assaults, and a budget that went off the rails, growing about 10% this year alone, you can see why I'm concerned. I'm not a genius, right? But we all know, when this community re-elected these wild and coyotes, that the result, right? We're gonna be painful. Painful to the students, and painful to the taxpayers. Now, we don't have to be the smartest people in the room, by any means. But we have the ability to seek stakeholder input, as obligated by our policy, 011. We should do that prior to hiring people. Thank you. Thank you. A motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Ayes have it. The motion and a second to approve the following request for pre approval of courses and programs of study for continuing education. I'll take those as an Consent agenda item one through seven. The motion and a second, please. So moved. Mr. Holland. Second. Mr. Wentz. Any questions on the course of for continuing education? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Your this motion is a second. Can we take the next four pages as consent items? No. We have a motion and a second to approve the technology FMLA leave for the following employees not to exceed 12 weeks. Employee 1367, employee 162, and employee 1102. We have a motion and a second, please. Mr. Wentz, Mr. Holland, question on FMLA. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We have a motion and a second to accept the intent to retire for the following professional employees effective at the end of the 2019-2020 school year, unless otherwise noted, under their terms of their respective contracts with eligibility of retirement, of eligibility of all retirement benefits. Lisa Barth, 18 years of service. So moved. James Blakesley, 36 years of service. Martha Cox, 46 years of service. Beth Dauber, 20 years of service. Julie McHugh, 12 years of service. John Schoenberger, 11 years of service. Todd Surface, 39.27 years of service. And Laura Welke, 17 years of service. We need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second, but with regrets. I think these people did a wonderful job. I have no regrets. They should get retired. Thank you. <laughs> I um, would just like to thank the, the staff and the individuals here on this retirement list. There's a lot of wealth of knowledge uh, on this um, eight individuals. I can say that many of them have even helped me and, and worked with me in, in situations uh, in different things throughout the district. They, a lot of them have volunteered their time as well. Uh, a lot of evening hours uh, for some of these individuals that they were not required to do but went above and beyond for the students of our district. So I personally would like to thank each and every one of them uh, for their time and their service and the students of Lee Heighton uh, will definitely be missing these individuals. Thank you. And a first and a second. All those in favor of accepting the retire, attempt to retire. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. In a motion and a second to accept the intent to retire for the following support employee under the terms of the respective contract with eligibility of all retirement benefits. Patricia Lombardo, <coughs> effective the end of the 1920 school year. Need a motion and a second, please. Mr. Holland. 
Second. Father. Again, again, thank you for uh, this individual. 14 years of service with the district. Uh, touched a lot of students <coughs> as a paraprofessional. Um, they uh, end up assisting in a lot of different um, facets of the, the district, whether it be with students or other programs throughout the district. So I'd like to thank her, congratulate her on her years of service, and again, wish her uh, the best of luck. I echo those sentiments exactly. <laughs> favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it. Need a motion to accept, second to accept the resignation of the following employees. Joe Zarelli, head tennis coach, Richard Everett, part-time cleaner, team blocker, part-time power professional. Motion to the second, please. So, sorry. sorry. Any questions on those resignations? Was an exit interview done? Uh, there has not been an exit. They're just being approved now. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Under miscellaneous, it will take the motion A as a consent agenda, agenda item 1 through 18. For the following for the school journey, uh, school enrichment journey request. One so moved. Bradley? Second. Father? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let's have it. a motion and a second to approve the use of school property for the following consent agenda items 1 through 16. So moved. Bradley? Second. Ms. Spinelli? Any questions on those items? I have one. Well, number one, January 29th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Lee Hecton Area School High School Auditorium. Thinking, who, who scheduled this meeting? Did the, did the school district do it or did St. Louis? Uh, we worked with them to schedule the meeting. Uh, Mr. Tack is there, so you can talk. I don't even talk to him. So the question is, who scheduled it? Who scheduled it? Hold on. Who scheduled it? And why does it conflict with the budget meeting for this district? We don't need to. I, I just want to ask hey. this question to the uh, superintendent. Can I respond to you? I don't we may not need you, but I'm the the boss. I want to give you a question. We don't have any authority. So we have to talk to him. We can't talk to you. Exactly. Please explain the process since you were. We started this back in November with contact with uh, St. Luke's. <clears throat> and we've been working between the uh, program for the community and also for the middle school and the high school for the students. So at this time, we were able to get St. Luke's, their, one of the pulmonists, pulmonary people, in to come in. They're doing that for us. We're thankful. Uh, we're trying to educate parents and students of the dangers and the, all the items that pertain to it, new things, uh, different things that are out there that are changing all the time. And again, that is, we're thankful for St. Luke's to do that and come in and present that to us. But like I said, this has been in the process since before November. Okay, but since you're here and didn't answer the question, who set the date? And the time. It was the availability of the pulmonology. Stop. I'm asking him now because he wants to step up. You know, enough with the so who set the date and the time? Did you? St. Luke's. Okay. Okay. When they offered this date and time, did you ask for an alternative? We've been going through alternatives back and forth. It was at their discretion when they were available for right. us. What was the next available discretionable time? We've been going back and forth, like I said, since What the was November. the next available time? Mr. Tack, you don't need to continue. I know you don't need to, but let's just make sure we ask the question. <laughs> what was the next available time that did not conflict with the budget meeting for these things? This was $4 million under the, under the budget, and there's no budget meeting on the 29th. I appreciate you joining in. Thank you for the I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today, the meeting was originally scheduled for the 26th. My question would be, why didn't it happen on the 26th of November? And why don't we move the budget meeting if they're doing all this? Thank the you. conference. So as a concerned parent who would like to attend both presentations right now, don't have the opportunity to attend. Right. Correct. Thank you. So I'm very disappointed in how this was handled. Thank you. That's all I have to say. And, then, and again, the, the guidelines for Act 1 is we, that's the date that we're required to, to do what we want to do moving forward. To have monthly budget discussions on our budget. You have to pass a preliminary budget. Act 1 requires it by that. Yeah, but this budget didn't play for a long time. This yeah, example of the board majority using its dictatorial reign, blocking stakeholders, and oath following directives are managed. 
This appears to be another attempt to wield a dictatorial discretion to silence the community. The budget has it will be a preliminary budget that will be presented on Wednesday. And it's a preliminary only budget a regular board meeting. does not have any state increases, possible state increases, because the education budget by the state is not released until February 4th. There are other cost drivers that the school district does not know yet what the cost will be as we are in active negotiations for a collective bargaining agreement with our teachers. The budget will be a preliminary budget. It will be an ever-changing budget. Every month from now until June, there will be finance committee meetings where the budget will be discussed, and those will be properly advertised. Why wasn't it done here in this board meeting like it's been done every other year? And Wednesday's a board meeting. It's not just a finance meeting. You're, you, you asked for a board meeting. That is, that is correct. We said presentation or approval of the preliminary budget so it can be presented and then it can also be adjusted throughout so the remainder. So why wouldn't the board get access to this preliminary budget? We won't be sending that out. When will we be sending that out? Between today and Wednesday. <laughs> What's that? When are you going to send that out? Between today and Wednesday? We're going to have the presentation for you to, to see that information. All right. So, so when the hazing incident occurred, we got that email at the end of the board meeting. No, actually, right? believe, yeah, it was December 4th at the end of the, your email, I believe, I was December 4th at the end of the board meeting. Am I correct, Missy? Again, you're, you're silencing the community. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. It's unethical. It's, it's immoral. This is Lieber, by the way. I normally send out myself and my agenda and all my financials five days back. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on item A. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. In a motion and a second to approve the second reading of and approval of the following school district policies number 201, admission of students, number 208, withdrawal from school, and number 906.1, Title I parent complaints. In a motion and a second, please. Second. Mr. Nelly. Second. Mr. Bradley. One, one quick discussion. Are we going to, uh, one of our stakeholders? Yes, it's no, a no. It should be a new fact. I did correct it. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. And I appreciate the stakeholder that read it, checked it, and helped this board not make a mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments on the policy? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have a new motion and a second to acknowledge this following student teacher for the spring semester 2019 2020. From Kutztown University, Carla, Carly Lindau. So moved. Mr. Wentz. Second. Mr. Fuller. Questions on the student teacher? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Ayes have it. Appointments to the following positions. Negotiations of personnel committee, December 19th of 2020, will remain the same. Budget and Finance Committee will remain the same with Mr. Belt, Mrs. Spinelli, with the addition of our treasurer, Joy Beers. Buildings and grounds will remain the same. Policy Committee remains the same. Wellness remains the same. Memorial Library Committee, I'm looking for a volunteer. No one has volunteered to be um, on that not library board. As a, I guess it would be as a substitute. Ms. Spinelli would be as a substitute for Mrs. Mahalik. Excuse me, uh, are you accepting volunteers? No. Are you accepting a volunteer right now? Sounds like it, right? For library. Yeah, there's a library. There's a blank space. Should yeah. have volunteers? Great. Awesome. So let's go back a second. And I'd like to volunteer for the opening spot in the negotiations and personnel committee so that these people have a voice. Oh, there is. You see, is the no Lehigh way. Area School District Policy says that Larry Stern's already a de facto member of all these committees. So therefore, he doesn't need to be blocking a spot from a stakeholder beneficial candidate. So I would like to volunteer for that spot. And yes, we can do this, Larry, if you wish. It doesn't hurt but adding a person in, does it? Uh, more than, uh, according to your past behavior, I do think it would be a detriment to the district to have you interact with the person. Past, past behavior of negotiating and, and policy and committee for Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? What, what, well, what we, evidence would you like to use, sir? What else? I would like to use evidence, but I guess I really can't because it was an exact session that we had that we cannot really discuss your behavior. I'd like to hear what you have to say, sir. I think you're I just blocking the people from doing it. I decline to comment. 
You all take the volunteer? Yeah, don't even say it. No. You can file a, you actually can file a complaint, 906, written complaint. There's a hearing that this board has to listen to. Both sides get to talk about their side of the story. And then this adjudication gets to decide how it works. And if you don't like it, we can appeal that to the court. And then the court applies the policy. And I'll tell you what, this dictatorial policy that he's using, this is just another example of the board majority using a dictatorial reign, blocking stakeholders, and oath following directors. This appears to be an attempt to wield the dictatorial discretion and silence this community. Thank you. Along with the athletic committee will remain the same. Mr. Uh, legislative policy remains the same. The veterans committee for Title I remains and academic affairs remains. On the whole business. You don't have to have an agenda. You have it as a amendment. We can bring it up under conditions. Okay. Any old business for discussion? I have one thing. Bradley. So we made, a, we made an arrangement that when the schools were sold, which I believe all four of them have been sold, that that money was going to be set aside to pay off the debt. Where is it? I don't see it on any of these reports. Since the motion was well, Where's the rest of the money? We're going to be finding that out as soon as the audit comes back in. So we're, we're agreeing that it's missing. Mr. Bradley, the two buildings sold since I've been here have been put in that account. I cannot oh, speak to so where the other two are missing. Wait, wait, wait. Dave, the motion Which was made missing? then. Those That's buildings right. were sold before you got on the board. You didn't make the motion until well into 2018. They were not. I've got to ask the You're question. telling me that why is it being put into a surplus account? Why is it not being put into a building account? Surplus to me, if I was sitting on the board, I think I'm money to spend. 
It is only named surplus because the board resolution referred to the properties as surplus. Uh, it is just a descriptor. Right. It's, it was a means to liquidate the schools. Yeah. Call them surplus. And as a comment on that, I think we did fairly well liquidating those schools given the past uh, sales of schools up in the northern part of our Pennsylvania that were sold for $100,000 to $200,000. Mr. Stern, you had an appraisal that was twice the amount of Mr. Appraisal. How could you do that? On the new business. There's no responsibility to have to set that up. Should have not. Can I ask you a question real quick? Totally rushed. Now, we had um, a motion made to look into redaction software, and that was last year sometime. Mm -hmm. um, and it was supposed to be 90 days come back with some kind of information, which hasn't happened. Why doesn't that continually show up in old business? The information for redaction software was discussed in a meeting. Uh, we did have this discussion, I'm glad I actually had this still in here, um, that objective redact, extract systems, and redact it all was, was discussed. And it's, Objective Redact works on Word, Excel, Adobe documents, does not work on email, Outlook files, or scanned PDF documents, can be used manually, cost is $299 per license. Work on image extract systems, works on image files, does not work on email. However, uh, there is a new version uh, that they were told us that may come out to help with, because Outlook seems to be one of the more commonly used in emails. That yearly cost was $2,280. Uh, Redact all works on Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Adobe, does not work on email, can be used manually, redacted, done via web program. Uh, there was a sample as well. Uh, cost depends on the volume, but they estimate it costs about 25 cents per page for the software. But the issue with redaction software, still, even though we have a software program, Mr. Filer and Attorney Schwab, when we're looking at redacting of information to make sure we're covered and we're not putting ourselves in liabilities and releasing some type of information, they still would need to review it, and that would you know, cost as well. Okay. If I, I don't say, just don't remember it ever being yeah. discussed. Yeah, it might have been discussed in the committee meeting. Yeah, but I, I don't I, remember. I know we did. This, I just happen to still have it in my in my file. So was that in a committee meeting? I'd have to look. I I don't have the. I just don't remember seen. anything being stated in a board meeting and I've been to them all. So. <laughs> but if I could just add also part of the issue with these redaction softwares, PDF files have layers in them, so if you put a black layer over it. No, I get that. Meeting, but the thing that's is. That's part of the concern. Was, my, my thought was that, and I understand about the manual redaction, but if the software redacts it, you print that out, you manually redact it. And that would require less looking at things that don't need redaction. And the, uh, the redaction, too, that we currently do to make sure we do review it, and sometimes it still bleeds through, even with some of these other things, and we have to make an extra copy. Of it too, just to Interesting, because that didn't happen on the ballot. <laughs> it just bled through quite well. Oh, but, <laughs> but for, Sorry, for this that one. That one. <laughs> okay, on new business, uh, Mr. Weiler has a item for new business. Uh, Judge Sirk was after his decision on the Simon Campbell appeal. In the appeal, in his decision, he ordered that 39 of the 53 emails were properly redacted. Uh, the remaining emails would need to be provided to Mr. Campbell uh, in their original form. Uh, I have all of the documents ready to vote, Mr. Campbell. Uh, we have until the 29th, should you want to appeal it. Uh, but I would like some direction for the board with how you'd like me to handle this. Um, as I said in the email, we're not complying with court order and supplying information, and all of the information regarding the students have been completely redacted. So, uh, whatever the board decides, how we'll put forward. <laughs> so I make a motion that we provide Mr. Campbell with the documents for Mr. Weiler's. Uh, uh, pursuant to Judge Surface's order. Pursuant to Judge Surface's order. Second. Provide Mr. Campbell with documents. Pursuant to Judge Surface's order. I would just choose not to appeal. Right? That's easy. Okay. Any discussion on that, Mr. Bradley? Yeah. So, when I read this decision, there's some governance here that we got to take a look at. It's another example of the Ford majority using the statutory rank. 
who authorized our solicitor to launch this case at all? You did. Yeah. <laughs> so it was voted on. It was voted on by a board, right? This board. So, exactly. Not by a board. I know this, this board. I agree. And, and <laughs> as these five give blind trust to the very administration, including the solicitor, that we were all elected to oversee, the minorities obstructed from lawful responsibility. Once the OOR said, give them the records, we had a court case that said, give them the records. We could comply at that time. This board chose not only to block that transparency and spend all this money to do it, but they also then, somebody, somebody in this room, after that appeal was, decided to do a constitutionality and the right to know law and spend all of those dollars on our solicitor instead of our kids, only to be spanked, horribly spanked, by the judge saying, I should read it because I don't want to circumvent it. It's too long. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's basically like, what are you nuts? How did this happen? How did our district spend this money on a law firm instead of those kids when we're practically bankrupt? You don't have any money. And basically, with the court order saying you have to do something, that means you didn't do it originally, which means you broke the law. Twice. And we've got to stop this lack of transparency. It's costing the district tons of money. Okay. It hurts the district. Mr. Bradley, I would yes. disagree with you. So the way the RR goes and the school district is this, I don't think they're wrong at all. So they, they have a time frame in order to appeal anything that the OR says. Correct. The OR is just simply a attorney, not a judge. And they have that right. That's our God, that is our given right as a district to do that. So therefore, I would assume that the, the board president and, and, and Mr. Cleaver are given that right to make that decision. Absolutely not. The system. board has to do it. Yeah. The board has to do it, number one. And number two, I respectfully disagree. I, I understand that. The board has to do it, not in the industry. But at the same time, the board is making a decision, do we want to spend these dollars in opposition to that to get the appeal, for whatever reason they want to do it, right? They have a legal right. We're not stopping it away. The question becomes morally, why would you? Especially when you're going to get spanked. And you wait, know it. In advance that we're going to get spanked. I mean, everyone in this room even had a secondary motion saying, why are we challenging the constitutionality? And these rubber stampers said, why trust? Let's do it. Thank you, Mr. I don't have an issue you're with welcome. the appeal. I understand with redaction of the students' information and stuff. And staff as well. Right. I mean, that's, you know, common sense. As far as the appeal on uh, constitutional grounds, that was ridiculous. As, and it had already been said in other things. Um, but anyway, it would be interesting to find out how much the constitutionality question cost over the regular appeal procedure on the emails to redact the correct information. I, I believe, and Mr. Uh, Father, correct me if I'm wrong, when we send this stuff to the OR, we ask for them to hold every time. We've been asking the OR to hold the hearing to avoid the appeals. Oh, no, I, I, I understand, understand that, and so did Simon Campbell ask for yeah. in-camera review. I get that. Uh, My okay. question is the appealing of that particular right to know request on constitutionality grounds, <coughs> that the law is not constitutional. That is the part that bothers me about that appeal. Moving forward, I'd like to make a motion that we require. I have a motion. We have a motion over the floor, Mr. Bradley. And also, is there anyone else? Would anybody else like to speak on the motion concerning the um, actions pursuant to Judge Surface's ruling? All those in favor of the motion? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Guys have it. One quick motion to uh, require our subordinate administration to provide an ample access and ample time to review the retained records as required by Pennsylvania School Code 518. Can we 
you get a second, please? I'll second that. What are we talking about? New business. I'm asking for a motion and a second. You got a motion and a second. That's why we're having to comment on it. What yeah. kind of documents? What? 518 documents. The key reference, sir. 518. Where does it take fire district? School code. What File codes. I'm just making code. sure we enforce the code. Do you not know it? I believe you have them already. I'm sorry? I believe you have. Actually, I believe the last week we were here, we gave you three documents to review. You left them here and didn't take them with you. Uh, I'm looking for. <coughs> Very, very simply, do I? Melissa, <laughs> <laughs> can you please read I, I didn't catch it at all. All right, I'll, I'll go slower. I'm trying to get some public comments and people have a chance to speak. Motion to require our subordinate administration to provide amicable access and ample time to review retained records as required by Pennsylvania School Code 518. Okay. So all I'm asking you to do is apply with the code, follow the code, don't use your dictatorial powers to block an individual director from having access to records. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Bradley, a second by Joy Beers. Is that correct? Any further discussion? Any discussion from the uh, public? It would be All nice to have somebody looking. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I would like to resign as treasurer. <clears throat> um, I'm going to send out written, a written documentation of this. I would like February 14th to be the last official day where my electronic signature is used. So I'm hoping, Larry, that you'll lead a nomination now. I think three weeks is enough time to do the proper paperwork, get all that put in order. Um, quite frankly, um, the sorts of things I've been hearing in the last month of, of students uh, potentially getting harmed has upset me um, so very much. Um, and uh, I'm not part of the board majority, so I don't feel that I'm making decisions here. Again, my signature is being applied to documents, and uh, I'm really not comfortable with that anymore. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Julie, are you saying that the district has your signature in a stamp that they were using? Um, they have an electronic signature of several individuals. Um, I believe it's myself, Larry, and Patty, and those three signatures in unison are applied to financial documents, including checks. Do you get a copy of where your signature was applied as part of this? authorization that you gave to them? Do they send you a copy of everywhere they used your signature? I do not get a copy of those things. Ever? Yeah, you do I receive a copy of the phone check mm -hmm. register, which lists every check that has been issued by the district where those signatures would have been applied. But wait, do you get a copy of everywhere your signature is applied? Not the, not the accumulation of those signatures, but do you get a copy of every, where, every place that this district used your name to sign something? If I do not specifically request a copy of that document, it is not given to me. That's just common sense. Anyone that signs their name to something and says, use my signature, should normally get a copy of where it was applied, because basically you're abdicating your authority to them, and therefore out of trust, out of trustworthiness, it's normally given back to you, saying, here's what I use for city. So that's only common sense. You're telling me that that's not been applied? Was that the practice from years past as well? The check register is listed every month in your document, so those would be the checks that those signatures are found on. One more time. I mean, listen, Only the ones with the check register are there. Yeah. I mean, let's not get distracted. Who has come here tonight because they have heard of potential students being armed and they have a concern about that? Who's here? So, I don't know, I just, I just think it's odd, for example, that such people were not recognized at the onset and that a discussion was not led. I just, I'm not comfortable with the way the board majority is handling uh, what's being uh, said within the community. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first, we'll have a motion and a 
second to accept your resignation as treasurer. Motion and second. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Joy Beers as treasurer for the as of February 14th. As of February 14th. Does, does she not have to submit her written letter with her signature? I can not Thank you. Be nice. They have their signature. You know it. Thanks. Second? Second. Second by David Bradley. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. You guys have it. Mm -hmm. Motion to the second for Army IED folks to submit their interest as treasurer. Before you just take a nomination, right? Okay. I nominate myself and guarantee that I will not provide a rubber stamp to anyone to use my signature to pay a single bill without me being able to review it. I'll second that. Yeah, it's a third. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's not that one. I want my own. No one's in the back. Second. Myself. Okay. <coughs> yep. So let's um any other nominations for Trevor or any other volunteers for Trevor? Here we have Mr. Bradley and Mr. Bowler as candidates for Trevor. This um I any discussion? I have a discussion with Mike. These five give their blind trust to the very administration we are all elected to oversee. The minority is obstructed from their lawful responsibility to hold the government administration accountable. The history, just a few years of unchecked rubber stamping and blind trust, has shown us numerous student injuries, heinous student <coughs> conduct incidents resulting in police involvement and student being admitted to the hospital, including the emergency intensive care unit. This should concern every parent and the business of this school. I feel strongly that the district is spiraling out of control. The lack of proper oversight and lack of financial transparency has placed this district in distress. Either a massive tax increase or widespread austerity measures will be the result. And therefore, I highly recommend you let me do my job, as I was elected to do, and listen to those people as a public servant to control what this district's doing. Thank you. I'll say if I'm chosen as treasurer, I can work with Patty. I can ask questions respectfully without badgering name calling, yelling, and any of the other things they're typically experienced in conversations with Mr. Bradley. Will you give them a stamp of your name? I believe that's part of the course, and I will expect to continue, be able to continue to review documents for this name's use. So, Joy was unable to get these documents. Which ones are you going to get the access to, sir? We'll find out one. No. I guarantee you. <laughs> that that will not be the case because we have a history of just a few years of unchecked rubber stamping and blind trust that showed us numerous problems associated with this district. And when you look at the number of votes in the people, look, we can fix this. We can fix this. I, I get it, right, guys? Listening to logic and reason didn't get us out, <laughs> right? But it can get us out. And we all know the district spent you're under $100 million in debt. $100 million in liability debt, you know? It's a mess. 
121 according to the DD. 121? All right. According to the DD last year. We can fix this. Logic and reasoning can get us out. That's not how we got here. You guys are a bunch of rubber stampers that said, I trust these people without any, with a blind trust. You don't even read the policy. You allow the superintendent and the solicitor to make decisions that this board is supposed to be asking those people prior to executing. Thank you. Please fix this today. And oh, enjoy thanks for making this an opportunity. However, all you had to do was pull your signature, and then they would be forced to show you everything prior to you signing it. And I know that that's a very difficult thing given all the other concerns, and I fully respect your current state of uh, situation. Thank you. It's not possible to negotiate with these people. Uh, I agree. You, you cannot it's negotiate with people, right? You can't negotiate with people. However, we can see up to more. You have people here, right? You can't negotiate. Pat Kerr, if you can't handle being on the fifty board, he's on. There's no such thing, Mr. Idle. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about them. Okay, listen. Please. You go have that dictatorial authority. I knew you were going to hear it. He, he, he was a real stammer. He was a real stammer. We're challenging his own morality. We're challenging the morality of an individual board member that used to be on the board that I didn't understand. Board three. Please. So, Wagner, please follow the previous protocol. So we'll vote for both of them. We just have to say Mr. Bradley or Mr. Fuller when Correct. I have to call their name. Correct. Ms. Joy Beers? Dave. Mr. Richard Belts? Absent. Mr. David Bradley? Myself. Thank you. Mr. Nathan Fuller? Myself. Mr. Stephen Holland? Hey. Ms. Gail Hollick? David. Ms. Ray Spinelli? Mr. Fuller. Mr. Wayne Wentz? Nathan Fuller. Mr. Stern. Mr. Fuller. So we have five for Mr. Fuller, three for Mr. Bradley, one absent, so Mr. Fuller is ready. And at that point, we're going back and I put on Joy as a treasurer on the finance committee. I would like to amend that to include Mr. Fuller. Since he was treasurer, we should be part of the finance. How about that? He's staring out of the little light, the mad dog. Okay. I'm mad dog. Thank you. Speak your words. Yep. And on the director's request, discussion request, Mr. Brother. I don't let the people speak. Thank you. Okay. Um, first to the floor, Mrs. Rodriguez. I would like to thank the board for hearing our story tonight. I am here because there is an unchecked system in the middle school, specifically. Okay. Um, my son is a special needs student. He is receiving um, support with the IU, his science program, he's a psychologist, and he has recently um, escalated because a bully uh, is back in the school district, and it has occurred to me that I would be um, negligent to allow him to continue on at the school. So last week, I asked him um, if he wanted to be homeschooled, and his answer was yes. Um, this was probably one of the easiest decisions that I've ever made uh, for my son, knowing that he is facing being bullied without really being supported in school. Uh, prior, since he's been at the middle school for four years, I, you know, he's an eighth grade student, I really wanted him to finish. Um, there was a Times News article, and he has been bullied ever since he got into the school. So there was a Times News article that stated that they hadn't had zero cases of bullying, some in Hill. I mean, Cabot Valley had also zero cases of bullying. And Smoffer reported 12. In my mind, I'm wondering how is this possible when I'm in the school talking to Mr. Everett and uh, the people there about the situation, now knowing that unless I report to say to say or report it in a form, which I asked for, if there were any forms on bullying here 
And no one said, no, there's, there's no forms to fill out. You can't report that. So <laughs> we stopped the administration. So um, I can understand um, you know, Mr. Sedlin being uh, confused about talking to um, some of the principals and, and, and staff and trying to get things done, but nothing gets reported. Um, when this child returned from his uh, expulsion for being a part of a hazing, I understand, my son uh, was being upset again by the same student, and another student told me about it. So when I approached him and said, why didn't you tell me? He simply replied that snitches get stitches, and that telling makes you weak. He has Asperger's. He's very little. And I can't continue to put him in an environment <coughs> where uh, the administrator is letting the children uh, govern themselves. Like, you only need five kids to tell on another child. And usually that child is innocent. And the bullies are the ones who are trying to get the child in trouble. I have come up against that a couple of times with Nathan, my son. So, um, I'm here tonight to, to ask you, I, I pay $800 to a tutor because he has problems with dyslexia that I was told didn't exist. It was poor reading skills when I brought it up to the school. Um, so I have paid a tutor $800 a month. I also have him seeing a psychologist now because all the support that we're receiving in the special education program is not, and that's $100 a week. Um, I spent $125 for homeschool because he's not safe in middle school. And his anxiety it was evidence of that. And his relief as well when this child was no longer in school. His 10-day suspension was probably the best 10 days of my son's life. I can't see putting children like this back into our school system to, to make it an unsafe place for our children. If I sent back, him back to school, I would be considering myself as an agent. I want you guys to try to um, take a look at what is going on in the schools. And I, I need you to listen to what the children are saying. You know, I asked my eighth grader, what advice would you have for a fifth grader coming into middle school? And there were other eighth graders in my car, and they said, oh, good luck. Um, I don't think we should leave it up to the children to tell on each other. I think that should be the teachers and the adults' responsibility in the building. However, when you have adults and teachers that are also bullies and acting on a court to be in school, having the children use uh, pressure points so that they won't cry during class, or, you know, having the child say, well, is that your answer, is that a yes, constantly. That's, that's not appropriate. Um, so, once I realized how badly uh, the anxiety was part of his bullying, um, by evidence of this child's absence from school, I I started to realize how unsafe this place was. There was a video that I was uh, shown by my son. Um, during a doctor's appointment, we were sitting together, and he said, uh, look at this. This is you know, my bully's voice on there. And there were, it was a bunch of pushing and shoving and people um, knocking a child down. And I said to him, Oh my God, what are they doing to this child? What are they doing? And he said, that's how they joke. That's how they joke? This is not a joke. None of this is a joke. People are seriously being injured. You know, parents are very upset. There's, you know, suicide, there's hazing, and no report of bullying. How can that be? How can it be that there's no bullying reporting and all of a sudden now we have hazing? I don't understand where the disconnect was. But after persistence, 
after pulling my child out of school, now I'm getting answers, you know? So I, I feel like the board uh, should really look into the dynamics and the environment of middle school. It is not safe. Thank you. Thank you. Says things aren't going as well. You know, they give you the old fine, right? And that's not enough. You want to, you want to probe a little bit. After they gave you the information, do you know as a parent how the process of the school worked? Were you ever educated as to how that works, so that we can stop this stuff with a board if they were moral and then decided that we care about the students and we want to protect them and we want to save the community and do our job? No. Are you aware of that? No one ever said to me what their process was up until I um, decided to pull Nathan out of school and said, I understand that I'm telling, you know, you guys, but nobody's reporting it. How is that possible? As a parent, I thought telling the, the people in charge of the school that was reporting. So um, I was then informed about Safe to Say. I did post that on my Facebook, it got 12 shares, and I, I was thanked by several parents in the community because it does go directly to the Attorney General's office and bypasses the school. So it is a safe way to tell what is happening anonymously, anonymously to someone who will do something about it. And, and do you think the child was educated as well that that Safe to Say program, Safe to Say Something is the way to is it an anonymous program so that they don't have the issue of snitches get stitches? Well, um, I think I think the child does not understand. He's currently seeing a psychologist to um, ease his fears that he won't be in trouble or he won't um, get in trouble from any other child. I, so. I can respect that, but the idea is: Did this school provide the necessary training? to make sure that this child, your parents, yourself, your friends, and everybody else in the community knows exactly what to do when no. it starts so we can nip it in the bud. No, I assume but, that telling someone was the start of them handling it. Well, there is a mandated reporting process, which again, we don't know that process, so that's why that top down from safe to say something is so valuable. Absolutely. Because if you as a stakeholder would file a formal written complaint saying, I want to see every instance of bullying. I want to see every mandated report that came out of the school. I want to see these things. Your board morally is obligated to provide that to you as a stakeholder. You guys run the show. Yes, we're I public have... service, not public bullies. Like well, yes, I still have some meetings with the IEP, and I still have to finish up details because this just happened last week. It was something that I did very quickly, you know, for my child's safety. So, right. so, right. so there will probably be a, a request for those reports in the near future. So the bank district does not have any documents that are mandated reporting. Those are filed and they're handled by the police. Let's see. There's also a website that says but uh, educator misconduct that you can go to the state directly again and file misconduct. If you think that your student told somebody something and then nothing happened, they have a educator misconduct access as well around this come on we're in but, um, and who would be responsible for the money that i'm putting out to educate my child your district okay thank you very much which is why if we protect the students we save the community thank you mr adam has a question hold on we have more yeah we have no that's an excellent oh yeah uh, our vote We have some serious issues here. I don't have any grandkids in the district. I don't have any kids in the district. But these children are our future. They're our future leaders. They're just our future. And we have to do better by them. Um, I 
don't remember where I read it, but I read that the climate study was done and it should have been back, I think, the middle of November. No, November was when it was made available. Okay, that's what right. We're doing that after the PSSA It's already set up. We have the codes and that'll be, information will be out in May. We recommend fall and spring. But we were, couldn't do it earlier in the year because it was revised and I believe it was November 14th, I believe it was the actual date of PD. If you want PD's website, you can see the climate study. Yeah, I, I did well, see we did stuff on PDE, but I, and like I said, I don't remember where I read it. But I thought that maybe it was referring to getting it started. You know? And also part of our audit is also our school safety report too. So when we're giving audit at school safety is part of that report. Okay. Um, and I believe Mrs. Rodriguez mentioned the article in the Times News. Um, I was corrected on this as well by someone else. We had two incidences of bullying reported. I think it was in 1718. Um, and what I hear from parents is they Reporting to an administrator should be reporting, but apparently that's not. It seems that the community is getting the fact they need to do a formal written complaint. And it's just a shame I had to come to this. I don't want to see any kid hurt. I understand the child that got injured in the bathroom. You're not going to stop all of that. I mean, it was in a private area where there was no teacher or adult available. It could have still happened anyway. Um, but it, it is also my understanding that the child who caused this, or maybe perhaps it was a group, I don't know, I wasn't there, is still in school. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what BHA is for? Mm -hmm. There have been comments that this child has been hurting other children since kindergarten. He's now in fifth grade. I want to say something. Okay, I... Just a second, let me finish. Okay, because my grandson's involved in that issue. So is hers. Her son okay, just give so me a second. If, if a child is acting out in this way, isn't that a cry for help? Is there something going on in that child's life that makes him hurt other children to get attention put on the problem? I'm not just talking about the kid who was a victim here. Because maybe the perpetrator is a victim also. Maybe he needs help. How do we provide that help? We have to, because they're our future. And I don't want to see the kid or the children who did it get lost either. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Barb. Barb, close. Instances like this do have two victims, the, the perpetrator and the victim. That's very common. No, I get it. So our policy okay, about hazing and other things is all online, right? And it's supposed to have this thorough and comprehensive investigation. I'm that's not even going to go on investigation. That's where the board is supposed to be overseeing to make sure it happens. We have a policy, 011, that says seek input of the stakeholders. Right. And then there's a school code 426 that says anytime three of these directors ask for a special meeting it. so that the people can listen and have a, a chance to talk and not at 939, but in not just three minutes, they can actually speak. Joy asked for that meeting. I asked for that meeting. Gail asked for that meeting. I know. And it was blocked. I know. It's disturbing. And I, get I, it. I yield the floor, please, whoever's next or if she can talk, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. You got my name. So, unfortunately, there's situations where we can't give information out. We're talking about health and welfare of students. And, no, and I understand that. I understand the privacy issues and there are no names and, and everything even, else. There's multiple transparency. Even, even to the point, again, Mr. Bradley, can we please, um, to the point to where individuals want to know what happened to the other students who were involved in it. We are not permitted to discuss any type of discipline. So, for example, if me and you got into an altercation in school, we were students got suspended and you got suspended and my parents came in and said what did the other person get they are not legally allowed to even no I, I get that so there unfortunately the way it is there's a lot of protected rights for mm -hmm. children because it is not you know something the information that we could share and it, as much as you know we like to say stuff on social media is inaccurate 
you know, there's an investigation that did take place. We're working with the police. We work with the police all the time at any time that, you know, it needs to be addressed. Um, but we can't disclose that type of information. Some people can't handle that. And there's times where people come right. in and they're very upset, but that's just... The well, way if their is. child is hurt, especially like that poor kid with a brain bleed, that's a traumatic brain injury. That is correct. And it can affect him 10 years down the road. He might be fine now. But my point is this. If what I read on Facebook is correct, and, and again, this kid... we cannot control social media. I, I get that, but if it's correct and this child has been hurting God other children that. since kindergarten, was that not a cry for help by that child that something is wrong in his life? And why is he still in a position to hurt other kids? Students have a right to be educated. There are many legal but issues. But where do we draw the line? Again, Where do we draw the line? Here it is. We offer the support. You get, there's different regulations. Students have the right to be educated. Right. Students also have the right to be disciplined, which what, what happens. Um, and they have the right to be safe in school, too. That is correct. But there's also a right to those individual students to have a free and appropriate public education. Because someone is you know, doing this, there doesn't mean that there's not resources already allocated for that individual student to help with this process. It's an unfortunate situation, uh, but uh, things have been addressed. Uh, the school has investigated, handled it. The school police officer, Officer Kazakavich, has also been in contact and addressed. So I don't want people to think nothing was nothing was complete. Unfortunately, I can't share what was done. No, I, I, and I understand that. I'm saying, saying, but but isn't that what places like the HA and Kids Peace are for? Yeah. There's, well, kids' piece is something that you have to be placed. You have to be placed there. Okay. We could recommend a child to go somewhere. If that parent disagrees with our recommendation, we don't have that option. Oh. So you're saying that a, student, a child who is completely disruptive to the education process, a harm to other students, you would have to. You would have to. One situation does not create a harm to other students. One what? situation, you got three right here. No, I, I'm not saying, but what I'm saying is what you you're referring to. One child that started in September was reported to the principal. He hit my grandson in the back of the head. I, fortunately, was a CO, okay? Came home from work, my grandson told me. Said, Mom, let's go. Went to their house. Oh, you're just babysitting our CNs. The path your son's on, I'll be babysitting him too. Mm -hmm. Well, that was in September. Now in November, we, I got two more. Same kid. So what's the problem? And I'm told to get the F off their property because I'm threatening their kid. Really? Let's call the cops. Yeah, we'll see who's, who's the problem. Yeah, I I'm coming to you because your kid's a problem. He bullied my grandson from Pee Wee football. Oh, no, I had enough. I, I think a lot of people's questions here tonight is, is where does the line go as to where the dual school district has the authority to say, okay, that child is disruptive to the point that they can be pulled from the classroom, put into alternative schooling, i.e. BHA. Right. Um, or on the other hand, at what point, you know, I, I mean, I have a child too. I mean, I, can I, tell you I, have to, I have to question that and ask that question as a superintendent. And I know that's a hard question to answer. No, it's, it's if, as a parent, and it's, that's the recommendation the school district's making. There is a legal process that we have to go through. In a due process hearing, and, and Mr. Filer can attest to that. For example, if a student is expelled, that parent has a right to seek the due process and present its case in front of the school board. Well, okay. when is there going to be a time to, when the stuff is reported, okay, it was or actually reported to We've never had this issue. Mr. Cleaver, I'm the alumni of the school district. We didn't have this stuff. This is. This whole idea of hazing and and thing, I, I just maybe I'm completely oblivious to remembering it, but we didn't have these issues. I can so, tell you, I mean, social economical things have changed to change culture, to change things of how kids are raised. But I don't think it's all this. I can tell you we're in cases right now to where we're actually fighting to have students placed, and because of the way the law is written and the op that we're we're battling back and forth trying to make the best possible recommendation for placement of students. And if they don't agree with it, it's, it's very tough and it becomes a legal battle. It becomes a legal battle. No matter what I say or no matter what we recommend, no matter how times we have uh, staff members go through and document daily incident reports, we have it. And 
they come in, they have lawyers too, and for their individual rights, and it's very, and very you understand that they students do have a yeah. due process, yeah. process, right? And but the this is just for recommendation because the student has harmed other students, and when they come in, it, it's very difficult for placement of students. So you're saying that the kids who are physically abusive and mentally abusive to the other children, they're being protected more than the kids who are just good kids who I'm just want to go to school. That. That's what it sounds like. I'm I mean, as a parent, I feel like my, my parents, my kids aren't being parents. protected. But I'm, I'm saying that this thing happened. She's talking about myself. Right? Right? I'm saying you only have, have the rights, rights that you know you can enforce. But what I, what I feel like as a parent and all my friends, we feel like these kids are getting more protection than our kids. So where's the line? What, are the, what, is, what do these kids have to do to get ejected from the school? I know so, when I was a kid, it didn't take much to get yeah, ejected yeah, from right. school. But, but so the where's the line? I mean, does someone have, have to die? Because nobody wants that. <laughs> but wait, 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 I'm a nurse. That little boy who smashed his head, he could have very easily hit the wrong spot, just a sensitive spot. He could have bled out on that bathroom floor and he could have died. He could have died. It could have been anybody's kid here. This is that little boy's mother, okay? This is his mother. So what are we doing to protect our kids instead of the bad kids? Homeschool your kids. And that's not a, that shouldn't be the option. That should not be the option. There should be a meeting. It should not be the option. hold a meeting to teach everyone what their rights are. Why is our only option to homeschool our kids? It's not. It's there is It should not be the option. And the only people in the buildings will be the ones that act. Give it our standing board the way we're saying it. It's, it's frustrating is all I'm saying. It's very frustrating. I think it's frustrating probably on both sides. You know, and my child's in fifth grade. She knows that boy. She doesn't know the victim, but she knows the other boy. And she just, she's the one who came home and told me about it. And then I had to find out, is this true? Please tell me this didn't happen. But then here's the fact. The fact is, if that kid bullies my kid, my kid's going to knock him down on his, he's going to knock him flat out. And we all know who's going to get punished, my child, Correct. for defending herself. And that should never happen. That shouldn't be an option. But I'll tell you what, if a kid puts their hands on my kid, I will fight to the death to defend them because this stuff shouldn't be going on. And I know that our recess people, they're awesome. There's not enough of them, unfortunately. There's too many blind spots in the recess area. They do a great job, but stuff happens. I get that. But this kid is a repeat offender. So where are we drawing the line with him? And we all know who the kid is. We all know. The kids know who the kid is. Mr. Cleaver, I respect that you're in a tough position. At the recent things that have gone in the district with, with, with a student, and we all know that a student committed suicide, it's still hidden secret. We, we know what you know that uh, what we hear from social media and what happened at the middle school with the child being shaking his head and the hazing incident. I know it's tough. There's other allegations that there was supposedly a bomb threat on Thursday as well in the school district. I don't know. But there's a lot of things going and I, I get I get that position and that stress. But I think the thing is is that we never had this in the school district. And the question now is what part of that paradigm has changed and shifted to openness as to is is there is there a question and that maybe the administration needs to take a look and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone particular but at the overall structure as to how the middle school is going. We get it. Kids are going through puberty, hormones change, kids do stupid stuff. I get it, I was on the But we didn't do this stuff when we were done. And, and that's concerning that that we really we didn't have any of that. I don't I can't honestly recall in my whole entire years in school of a suicide in school uh, during my time. And we've been we've been privileged, I guess, in a sense that we didn't have these issues. And I think that's where a lot of parents are coming from if they didn't have these issues. Where are they coming from? And we want to know that when our child goes to school, they're simply they're safe. You know, we, we don't want to be that thing. Let's prevent it while we're ahead of it. And, and unfortunately, we can't prevent every accident. I think correct. And I don't I don't expect you to say these Mr. Brown, I don't Mr. Brown, I don't expect this to put bathroom monitors in each every single bathroom for, for the kids because of the incident. But what has to end up happening is that we need to have the whole student body and have this kind of conversation. Into the auditorium again and say, 
okay, we need to have a conversation again. About this. And, right, and we do have a conversation with the students. We do talk to them. We talk to them importance about reporting stuff. We talk to them to this, the importance of knowing the district attorney's office comes in here and talks to these students about the dangers of social media and posting things and what have you. We talk to individuals and we talk to the players about hazing and the importance, you know, and what that is and that it won't be tolerated, you know, here in the district. So that information is, you know, is shared with them. But again, snitches get stitches. Mm. Snitches get stitches. And then children are left unsupervised. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think but Mr. Bradley does make a point to me. The one thing I didn't know is my, my eight-year-old has come home twice now upset because he's been accused on the bus of something that he didn't do. It. And he's like, Dad, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. And I've been told by even parents who called me and have told me he didn't do anything wrong. But I got a bus driver who's 75 years old screaming at my kid, threatening him because the bus driver knows who I am, knows me. I'm going to call your father and he's going to whoop, whoop you behind. I don't, I don't need my, my seven, my eight year old coming home crying on, on a bus. That's great. Agreed. That's Agreed. That's but, but as a parent, you, you complain, you have access to the video, you have access to But I need, but uh, I need to yeah, know these avenues as you parents do. that we have to go and if you we know right. something. You know, even if, even if it's not your child, out of moral and ethically, if you know something about a child being bullied by some other child or you're seeing it, you should be reporting it. It's what, just the right thing to do. What, what is the policy as an administration if a parent comes? Do you at any moment take it upon yourself to file for that parent? Or do you have we can't that? file for If an individual well, parent, what? like for a victim, there has to be Parent has to file. We can't file. So I can't file as a parent. No, I mean file legally. You're talking legally, right? I come to you as a victim's parent. Why don't you tell these parents the process? Or do you let them go out on their own to just scream out the door? The process for re reporting. Reporting it properly. So that does actually do something. Well, if, if an individual comes in, and I'll use Mr. Sevlin as an example, I don't know if he's still here, came in and had that discussion with Mr. Sevlin, he then reported back to him, you know, that, you know, how it was handled, you know, for that individual. But as far as a, as far as a report, we can't give that information out. Like, I can't say, we question student A or B. And, no, I think what Mr. Cameron is trying to say, He's talking about what the formal complaint process. What do I do to get this address? That's, that's, right? that's what I'm saying. There's right. a What do I do here to get this address at a higher level than what I'm saying? When you're it's really not possible. Yeah. I mean, like, when we call the principal, she didn't even tell us. Well, there's, there's a way, a process to do it. Okay. She didn't even tell us. And that's what we're doing. Cool. That's there's, what we're doing. There's a disconnect. That's a total disconnect okay. between the school The process and the of reporting the incident or the process of reporting? The incident, okay. any incident, like her dad had to be reported. So, so no, actually, this her kid will have numerous incidences reported about this child. And it would be right to the top where you would have to do something about it. I mean, you did something about it, I understand that. But a provincial offender like this to still be in the school? Is this tough? And, you know, and for these kids to be here and go to school? Yeah, my, when my kid's crying and he doesn't want to go to school, and he's a good kid, he's friends with everybody. Right? That's an embarrassment on all of you. And you're all responsible for that. I have something to say about that. It's the parents of those kids. As well. No, no, not as well. It's like they cannot do anything if the parent says no. Because the kid is a minor, so it's the parents that have to make the decision for them. So if the parent says no, they're not allowed to do anything. Well, there's a problem there. There's a problem. 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 There
Because the board is okay with this. Very careful. Understand how it is. If you take, stop. If you recognize that when you think you're telling somebody in the school, and then they're going to take that forward, the policy doesn't say they have to. So unless you force them, let me, let me put it really simple. If you stand up at that podium and say, I want to see the PPL bill, these guys can ignore you. Right. But if you walk up to that podium and recognize that that's a lobby effort and they don't have to listen to you, they have to listen, sorry, they have to listen. They don't have to do anything, right? But if you go on the other side of this wall and you write a piece of paper that says, give me that PPL bill, they have five days to answer you right. and give it to you. Or they get another 30 days to pretend they don't have it, can't find it, whatever, mm -hmm. the normal stuff. That's a contract. That's a legal written requirement of a stakeholder forcing the administration to hold them accountable. Same thing happens for these. If you can write a complaint, you're physically writing it down, you're obligating them. So when a student walks up to the principal and says, hey, he's, you know, Susie kissed me, or, or Johnny touched me, or whatever, or he punched me, or whatever, they should write it down. And I know it's bad, but at least the teacher should write it down and give it to the administration. We should obligate them to write it down. I know, and that's why the board, the board should oversee the administration, not rubber stamp them, and force them to see these things forward. So you nip it in the bud. Anytime it happens, it's nipped in the bud. It's, it's the old half hour of detention or something. You nip it in the bud. It's not happening. You've got to fix it. It's got to get escalated that this board mandates that this administration does these things. Educates people that it's safe to say. Educates people how the process works. Educates the students to say, write it down and copy someone else. Mr. Cleaver, when you, let's say, Oh, I'm sorry. If somebody calls safe to say, what's the process it's after they the, It's safe to say. Or it sends an email, whatever they do. They'll fill out the information mm -hmm. depending on the situation. Right. That individual responding to the safe to say could either call out or wait and send it via email the next morning at 6 a.m. So what do you mean by call out? They will call. There's three administrators that are called. In each for each report, there's a circuit. There's a, well, if it's a middle school, mm -hmm. uh, it goes to the principal, the assistant principal, high school or middle school, assistant principal, dean of students, and then at the elementary, it goes to both principals. You know, if no one responds and it's something they feel that needs to be addressed immediately, it also goes to the police. The police are involved as well. And you get a lot of a lot of times. So I want to hear this. A lot of times, if it's something to where they have concerns about self-harm, mm -hmm. the police will go do a well-child visit. So they'll actually go to the home, the police, and talk to the individual, the student, check and say, is everything okay? Yeah, it'll actually be dispatched. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so somebody makes a call, they're being harmed at school, or they feel that they're going to be harmed, someone made a threat, whatever. They, they do the first step, it goes to the principals. Okay, so then at that point, the principals do what? We have to respond to it and let them know what action was taken. So you have to respond back to that to company? The tips, to the okay. tipster. And then you, as the tipster, gets a number that you can verify and check and oversee to make but, sure that's Right, right. So then, okay, so you call or you, you, make, you initiate it. It goes safe to say they contact the principals. The principals contact them back and say, we've handled it, and that's the end, or where does it go from there? They can there? say, a lot of times it will be a dialogue that this has been addressed. We know that there's a social emotional issue with the student, you know, and that it's been forwarded to, you know, maybe there's a risk assessment that was completed on the student. Mm -hmm. And so we have to put in there what we what we did as a school district. Yep, that's part of the process. And then if they're satisfied, that's where it ends. If they're not satisfied, they, can, they call they the can, police, they call child they can, services, all of the above. Right to call the police, you know, and if it's an issue where the school police need to be identified or need to be part of it, the school police are also informed of the incident, you know, as well, for the investigation, for the school police officers. Well, right, but you can't go to the local police. You can, oh, absolutely. Okay. No, no, I went. They told me that if the school is the That's school the and they handle their own things and they can do nothing about it unless you guys call them. It de well, it depends on whatever. If it's something that is more serious, like a felony, a lot of times they'll. How about like a bomb threat? No, that, it depends on the situation. Um, yeah. I'm giving you an example without a bomb threat. And if it, depending on the investigation here, we have our own school police that could investigate it. Exactly. Or something to that effect, and that investigation okay, can take that that investigation can take place, and that student can be apprehended very shortly. Okay. 
I'm sorry? And that, that investigation could take place, and because of video surveillance and things, a lot, a lot of times those situations are handled pretty quick with the student Who's we'll used the video surveillance? Because I heard the hallway um, video cameras don't work. No, they are all often working. We had an issue how this you, weekend. How do you get proof of that? We had an issue this weekend um, that they went down for some reason, but they were they working. They made a bomb threat. But they were working, they were act active. On the day of the bomb threat? That is correct. What if I have so what bomb threat? We didn't know there was a bomb threat. There was, there was, again, there was a situation where we took, uh, there was a suspicious message in the bathroom. Uh, we were Not able a to suspicious see. message. It said, I'm going to blow the school up. And it was dated 124.20. Right, which was Friday. Right. So why right. wasn't the authorities called? You didn't know if that threat was serious or not. Because, because you couldn't have possibly known. Because on Thursday, sir, we were made aware of it. No, and it was, how do you know? How do you know that it was the other three days early? Again, we were made aware of the situation. A student of interest was completely apprehended in the process of the place. And the investigation so is still it. ongoing. It was up to you to have it. Well, why weren't the police? Our school police officers were involved in the investigation. Well, then why did they turn it into the Lehigh Police? Because I don't think they don't have to. They didn't say you're supposed to dial 911 right away. And certain teachers are supposed to check certain areas and then put your students into a safe area. And then you're supposed to continue to check with that. Again, the intimate, again, the situation with, again, Mr. 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 your policy says one thing. So in about, about 30 seconds here, I'm going to verify whether you followed your policy by the county cat. Okay, correct. And by the what? Cat and cat. Right. And that's the problem. We don't have oversight. We need a board to have the guts and the responsibility and, and to know. oversee our, our subordinate when, administration. It's not the other way around, guys. When that bomb threat was taken, how did you find out the bomb threat? I was Either called legit or not legit. I was called immediately and we have a process we handled. We started the investigation again. A student was apprehended because of video surveillance that we were able to view immediately. My recommendation to anyone who spiked videos were up and working, despite what you heard. Videos were available. They were actually available on Friday because we had a situation that we had to use that for video surveillance. So, so did you notify all the parents to the reverse? It was process? no problem. I didn't notify no. anything. No. So we addressed. Did you we notify the parents. And you didn't dial 911. I notified. You done an investigation. I notified our school police officer. Actually, I didn't notify the school police officer. And he's what? One, two. We have two school police officers. That is correct. Two school, school police officers handed an incident that could turn into something catastrophic in a matter of minutes because the student decides you're an expert and you have 20 years plus of emergency service police and fire yeah. and background and all that. No, I'm not. Shame on you, Mr. Cleaver. Shame on you for putting the student body and the teachers and the employees of this district in harm and not following your own policy. And I'll tell you what, if I was a board member right now, Mr. Cleaver, I would ask for your resignation. That is the only thing to call. I'll tell you what, I have you fired. Thank you. And again, the resignation of the board members that rubber stamp this stuff and don't even follow our own that's policy. That's this conversation should have been taken place weeks ago. Not one parent was called. Not one parent. Again. They weren't Not again. 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 Not again, please. We went through. Not again. The process. And you covered it up. That one. Right. When did we come? There was nothing covered up. Get rid of it. Let me go away. I can show you. Yes. I can show everybody in here. That there was something written. I didn't, I'm not disagreeing that there was something written. I'm not disagreeing. Well, it's not there. No, I know. I know what I'm calling it. When it says it's a scam, I didn't say it all up. They did the same. That was Friday. We found it on Thursday. We found it Friday morning. We found it when? Friday morning. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. It doesn't matter when you found it. That is incorrect. So you're saying you found the kid for Thursday and you had the school checked and made sure it was completely Our cleared by Friday? school officer went through and did a sweep. Were there children in the school at that time? Excuse me. This young lady just said the school police officer tried to talk her out of it. Are you kidding me? Talk her out of what? I'm sorry. Go on, follow the charges and the complaint. Are you kidding? 
Someone could be re referencing bullying and could end up being harassment. There's other, there's other ideals when we report it. So just because, for example, I felt it was bullying and you felt it was filed under harassment, you would file under that code for harassment. So there's, there's that. But I mean, if, if a parent makes an actual complaint saying that their child was bullied, they use the word. Does that make it a bully? Not automatically when we start looking. So you're saying there's different degrees of it? There's, there's a lot of. There's different degrees of bullying. What's the difference? What's the difference? Whose kid is it? Whose kid is it? Whose kid is it? I know. I just want to know about the difference. Are they on this person? Can we just let this individual? Please. Yes. My son was hurt by a bully. Yes. And the school district was able to get the nurse's office with a headache. And they asked him what the date was and who the president was, and he couldn't remember. And then when they asked him where he was, he thought he was at home when he was in school. And my son, he's a very kind, you know, he gets along with everyone. And then for another child to do this to him. And my biggest thing is my son could have lost his life. Absolutely. I mean, it came so close. Like, if I would not have taken him to the hospital, when I did, he would have lost his life. They medevaced him. It was that serious. And to try and keep a child that normally is very calm and collected and everything, to have a child laying down on the cat scan table and him completely <coughs> freaking out and having to have five people, including myself, hold him down to try and get a picture and then have him made it back to Lehigh Valley and thank God that they are good there and they know what they're doing. And he turned out to be fine, but still, he could still have other issues later on down the road. They do show that child, so people that have head injuries when they're younger can end up getting Alzheimer's a lot earlier. And my opinion, nothing, I mean, other than going to the police, the school police, which pretty much I feel try to talk me out of doing anything because he said, well, we can't have, we can't um, put an 11 year old in jail. Well, obviously not. But again, there is juvenile detention, behavioral schools, and stuff like that. And then <coughs> from what I heard, all he got was a three day suspension. 
And for a while, he was still in my son's class. Though my son, he didn't go to school. I did not send him to school for the first two weeks. And when he finally did go to school, he was in the principal's office. But that child was still in that class. And then all they did was transfer him over to a different teacher, which still they do lunch and recess together. He's also a repeat offender. Exactly. I've had other, I mean, I put up on Facebook when I was in the hospital with my son. Because obviously that's the only way anything gets around. I didn't expect to get it around or anything, but thankfully someone did. That we can stop this. I mean, I'm, I've been in the height my whole life. I've been into the school and everything. And I never had, I don't remember, like the man said before, I don't remember this ever happening. We never had this problem in school. And things aren't, it seems that things aren't being done. Like I said, I went and I, talked to the school police and he said pretty much again that you can't put an 11 year old in jail and pretty much anything else we can only put a non-traffic citation to the child you can't sue the parents or anything else and i feel as though he tried to talk me out of pursuing anything i have a question for you when, hold when, on a second real quick at that level, that is all our police officers can do is he's non traffic. But no one said go up to the other level or anything. No one helped you. No one no. no. That's a shame on this trip into this So so when your son got hurt like that at, at school and you were at home, I assume, and they did they call you to tell you he got hurt or did they call that he you had a headache, you? then he came to the nurse station for a headache. They didn't say what happened. So, my son so how did you find out what happened? My son started telling me some of what happened. That was in the back while he was at school? Yeah, while he was at the school. And the nurse or the They went and talked to their kids. Asked him or they went and talked to the kids and um, the kids said that my son tripped. And you're not going to trip backwards and smash your head to the level of having a, a fracture in your skull and a brain bleed. Right. But nobody ever, like, so I would think they should have called the ambulance, if anything. Right. Did they right question the, the other children before you got there, or when you were there? When I was there. When I was there, not anywhere around me. And nothing. nobody knew nothing? No. And she called you and said, your son has but a headache. Head yeah. And and did he have a lump on his head? And somebody tell the truth at 11 years old? Oh, I'm really. <laughs> Where's the overs? Thank you. I don't. I don't. Under what legal authority do we have to accept a waiver of expulsion? And what authority do you have as administration? And I'm going to ask him to answer that question because I don't think you know the answer. Thank you. The waiver of expulsion is a drop before the board to vote. So, so I mean, maybe under what about Pennsylvania about school code, is there a thing called waiver of expulsion? No. No. I think he's thought Fred was referencing a willful withdrawal. I, I understand that, but I'm asking, they mentioned waiver of expulsion. So under where is this waiver of expulsion in the Pennsylvania school code? The agreements that the district makes with certain students is they leave the expulsion process and they get placed into alternative education programs like DHA, that, that's how we handle certain expulsion processes. That there's no. When you say we handle it, meaning the solicitor or the board? The school district, by me. And the district is made up of the board. I have Mr. Mr. Brown, what he's telling you is, is that the waiver has to come before the thing. And Mr. 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 Cleaver and, and, and Mr. Stern, and I would assume council. Uh, it can go yes, with those good. parents at some given time. Well, has no authority outside this board room. Okay. No. Okay. okay, well then maybe Mr. Maybe no, Mr. Let, Mr. Let, 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 let him have to make wrong. the recommendation for expulsion. Okay. Yeah. And then at that point, the individual parents or authority, whoever it may be, has the right for a due process hearing. That yeah. would be here, heard before the board, and then ultimately the board would have to justify why that student <clears throat> is being placed. Now or the they can be talked into a waiver of expulsion and then make it all go away. Well, no, the students still I, I don't. Mr. 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 Brown, I disagree with you with that. Yeah. It, it, the no. child is being removed from the school. The state's trying to fix this. It's a, it's a problem. The, the child is being removed from the classroom. <laughs> who's being
being disruptive and as a threat either to staff or to other children. I don't see a problem at all. Oh, with well, it, with he's a sexual offender and all he's doing is going Correct. to another school. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no, there's yeah. no yeah. process. There's no, but no, it's a waiver of expulsion. And yeah. legally, when a student is expelled, they will ask if you're ex being, have been expelled. And it's very simple. The parent can check no. And there's no legal yep. obligation. It's just like for passing the track to go yeah. back and teach to go back and check. Same this problem. Discipline right. records are, you know, our private and privileged information at the but, end of the year. Again, that's why we have BHA. Talking about the board, overseeing what's happening. Right? Sir, there's I'm, people of character that can actually say, wait a second, this is wrong, you're passing but, the trash. Mr. Brown, typically those students who are, in that instance, who are sexually assaulted, they don't have the right to expel them. Yeah, that's why we have the BHA. Yeah, they don't have the right to expel them. Right. 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 Covering it up is not the answer. I don't think there's there's things. I think there's there's a little incidents here that I think are going to be strongly heard uh, at this point. I don't think there at this point there can be a, a covered up because I think it's well known in the public. There's a <clears throat> right to know request by the Channel 13 News, right? <laughs> the Channel 13 News about a fight on a school bus, or on a, a, an incident on a school bus, I'll use the term. Mm -hmm. This district wants to take them to court so they can't see the, um, the videos, because this district is a law enforcement agency. They denied the claim. Can I address that? And sure. I'm run with it. Um, there was a right to no request. It was addressed because it was part of an ongoing criminal investigation. So we do not turn over evidence as part of an ongoing criminal investigation. The right to know officer has already gotten back and made a decision that yes, this appears to apply to a criminal investigation. They are referring it to the district attorney's office to review, to determine whether or not it should be released. So now it's with the right to know officer for the district attorney of Carbon County. It's no longer with the Office of Open Records. That is going through the process that it's supposed to go through. And because it's a law enforcement. And because and somebody has to be under and they wrote it down, holding them accountable to make a decision and follow the problem. Mr. Bradley, it's a criminal investigation. I agree. Okay, so so why would you want to jeopardize an investigation of that student being held accountable for their actions and maybe even possibly their parents being held so accountable? Really agree. Okay. I'm, your, I'm on your side on that one. Why would you want them to turn that over? And I didn't say I wanted to turn it over. The person legally asked for it in writing. The key to this thing is this. No, is the key to this thing that you're missing, Mr. Bradley, is, is that it is a criminal ongoing investigation. Ongoing, meaning that they have not concluded their investigation. Now, once that investigation is concluded, that's a different story. When did it become a criminal investigation, sir? What's that? When did it become a criminal investigation? He just said so. Oh, no, when did it happen? Before the person asked for the record? To get a record? To find out? Or after? That's why they didn't get released. Well, yeah. I would assume. I would assume. I would assume at some point. Hold accountable and ask. I, I would assume at some point in time that someone in the administration went to the school board, the school officer, or one of them, and said, "Here, investigate this. This is what your job is. Go do it. Doing an investigation, and then not by the district attorney's office in determining whether or not they're going to file charges." I completely respect that. That's a great assumption. We should verify that. We should know that. The board should know it. They have a confidentiality when it's in executive session. You can check these things. This district does not do that. Yeah. So, so your issue with this is not the fact that there's an ongoing investigation. It's your the issue you with this is that, that, you, that you were notified as a school board member that, there were, that a student was under investigation for an incident with the school district. Is that your issue? Criminal activity occurring within a school should be notified to the board. Just like you should be notified if there's a bomb scare. Just like if someone has a whole bunch of slip and fall accidents, you want to say, why do we have a wet floor? But let me, let me ask you this, Mr. Bradley. Let me ask you this. I think maybe we'll all get some insight on this. To what extent, to what extent of what information would you want as a school board member? Lawful transparency. No. You're, you're, no That's it. That's no. it. Just lawful transparency. That's all you I'm need. I'm asking, Mr. Bradley, what specific information out of that incident do you want? 
Do you want the student's name? Do you want the student's ID number? No. Do you yeah. want, do, what, what do you want? Do you yeah. simply want Mr. Cleaver to send an email, hey, there was, an, there was an incident that occurred on a bus today, and our school board, our school uh, police yeah. officer is now investigating that. I'd like to let you know. Have most, a great day. Most definitely. That was exactly. all you need. That's all you need. And, and when a bus loses its brakes and it, it rolls into the bus in front of it and they do a robocall, that nobody was harmed and it was all okay, that's reassuring the community about what's happening within your schools. You have a whole community here but, upset but about what's happening in the schools. But but nobody knows what it is. I'm asking you, is that what you're asking? Lawful transparency. That's all it is. Lawful transparency. That's it. So, so, that's you're, not, so, so you're telling me, and I challenge Mr. Cleaver on this one. I think you know where I'm going with this, Mr. Cleaver. Okay. So if Mr. Cleaver sends you an email, simply says to the school board that there's an incident that has occurred, yep. you'll be satisfied. 100%. So school, and then you will never word. hear another word of no, you will hear another word. freedom of information. Sure. No, 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 you'll hear one more word. You'll hear one more word. At the end of that notification, within, let's say, a week or a month, you'll go back to them and say, what happened? Did we solve the problem? Did we resolve the issue? That's verification. That's verification. Mr. Cleaver, it is on record. Right. It is on record. Right. Can right. right. I answer a lot of questions? I would like to forward you the emails responses when I try to attempt to do that and see the responses I get. I love to see those emails, Mr. Cleaver. Well, Mr. Cleaver, guess what? Tomorrow, uh, sometime this week, I don't know what day I have, I will, I'll, I'll put a Freedom of Information Act in for those emails. <laughs> if you well, want to ask me for them, I can give them to you. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, um, listen, um, my name is Larry Whitting. I'm from Tamako. I'm not a resident of, uh, of the borough or of the high school district. I'm here to support uh, Bernadette Rodriguez and I know her son, um, uh, Nathan. And, and um, I want to approach this. You know, I have to say something. I came here to support her, and 90% of what I've heard in the past three hours has been bashing back and forth. And I'm not here, to, look, I'm not here to preach. All, all I know is that I have no reason to think that everybody up here is not honorable and is here for the right reason, regardless of what was said. Having said that, from my anecdotal perspective, um, there is obviously a student that is a problem for some people. There's probably three or four students that have been the recipient of, of this student's wrath. From a purely dollars and cents perspective. Uh, and I know that you were talking about waivers and all that stuff, but the fact is the school districts have to educate kids. Regardless of where they're going to be, you can kick them out of school, but you're still obligated financially to, to educate them. So regardless of where they are placed, BHA or whatever, if you get them out of the student population, that's one expense the district that they won't have. However, if there are three or four students that decide to cyber school their kids and some have IEPs, you know the dollars and cents is twenty to twenty-four thousand dollars a month. Financially it's kind of a no-brainer. I know that it, I'm, I'm simplifying this and I realize there's a lot of complex issues regarding this. But um, but if it is a, if it is a dollars and cents issue, um, it would seem to me again from the outside God knows, I, you know, I, I appreciate every one of you more than you know. And, uh, but I, I think that maybe you could look at that a little bit, and, and it would probably take the angst out of a lot of um, kids who are now, you know, whether there's a reason or not, if they're having trouble going to school, it's probably an issue. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ray, yes. what would you do with your, in your school district? I know you're president of the we, School District. We, what would you do with this situation with Bernadette? Well, first of all, we had our own crosses to bear relative oh. to bullying back in the early 90s. Everybody's aware of, of, uh, of a death that happened as a result of this. Oh. And, and, and so we, we take this very seriously. And in the Penn's report, as the newspaper article said, that we report everything we have to I mean, it makes it look horrible. But, um, no, from a look, you asked me a direct question. From a board perspective, right? The what board, our board, our, our board does that? not get involved in the minutia of that. We hold our, our superintendent, assistant superintendent, accountable for making decisions at the lower level. And from that perspective, 
if something's not handled, if, if we have parents coming to us and we detect a problem, we look at the superintendent and, and, and say, you know, you're handling it. But we're not going to get into the weeds and, do, and, and fix it. God knows, I don't think any board member has the expertise to do that, really. Uh, I mean, that's why we, that's why we hire administrators to do it. And um, you have much more patience than I do. So. But I, I, don't have, I don't have an answer to that. You know, it, de it depends on, on everything. And we've, and we've, we've had issues. Uh, we had a, a, a student who uh, was he's 24 years old and came to a school board meeting during the election cycle and said he was, he was bullied in grade school, he was bullied, bullied in middle school, he was bullied in high school, he was in college, he's bullied again. It's all, all our fault. And it's the first I've heard of it. And, 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 and it's not to suggest that these pains don't exist. What I'm suggesting is that perhaps that we can't be all things to all people, but everybody's talking about, you know, House Bill 1897 and, and doing away with cyber charters because they're evil and they take all this money and everything. But there's a reason they exist, and this might be the very reason in some cases why they do exist, because it's an alternative to their child's position in school. And it costs us, you guys, a ton of money to do it. So uh, I know you have your own cyber school here, that might be an answer, but it's still part of the organization. And it may not work for everybody, but if, if it's as easy as eliminating a student for good cause, then financially it might be the best decision. That kind of isolates a child that has well, no, no, they need to, yeah. Our job is not to isolate the yes, student. Our job is to take care of the student. It's our job as public schools to educate the student until they're 19, 18, 19 years old. And the venue that you decide to do that is the, it's what we're talking about here. You know, dude, if, if you had someone in the high school that was a danger to their, their fellow students, you would remove them from the student population. Uh, when a child is much younger, they, they appear as though they're not as intimidating. But nevertheless, they, they could be. You know, I, I'm on the board at the IU, and we had a circumstance where uh, a, a you know, teacher overreacted with a, a bully, student, third grade. I mean, way over the top. It shouldn't have happened, but happened. And, and we're rectifying that. And uh, you know, there's issues. You know, somebody said back there that, that it's the, the parents at home. Oh, duh. Yeah. I mean, how many how many parents do you see it? It's you went to the the, the house and you're told to get out because you're trying to protect somebody. I mean, how stupid is that? You know. But you can't you can't go to the house. You can't, Mr. Cleaver can't knock at the door and say, Hey, what are you doing here? You know, you have to deal with the cars that you have. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I have no business being here, but, but I do support um, Bernadette and, uh, and anything you can do to help her out would be appreciated by a lot of people. There's a lot of people that came here on her behalf, mm -hmm. another board member here, and, uh, and it's time for them. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sure. 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 When you have an administrator that fails to follow the policy, how do you hold them accountable? What's the process? Look, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I've heard you for the last three hours say the same thing to these guys. Well, we you got to do it, right? And well, you got to do what you got to do. Yes, sir. We can help ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if the Arctic's had their opportunity to speak, I No, I have those paper out. I don't know. Okay, all right. Well, you've been speaking. Have you made anything? Or? I'm Ryan. You're Ryan. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, as an alumni of the Hector School District in 2000, 2004 and as a veteran, uh, today is, in my eyes, a sad day. Uh, I don't know where the school district is going, uh, but it's certainly, I think, the, the tension in this room and these board meetings has certainly taken away from the education that I know that I got from the school. Uh, and I want my kids to get the same education that I want for them. Um, opinion, I, I wish we could hire back teachers such as Jeff Elder and Chuck Lavalette. Um, I think the 
Doe and, and Rick Bennett, who were some of the teachers who stuck out in my, in my memory over the years while I was getting educated. Um, they, they, were, they were good educators. Um, so, one of the things that uh, may or may not disagree, but I'll give you a little back history of who I am. Uh, I am a veteran. I do run a nonprofit here in the state that I founded in 2015 called Pennsylvania Outdoor Veterans. Uh, I am the founder and executive director. Um, and one of the things that I would encourage you, again, you don't have to do anything I say, but I would encourage you because transparency is everything. Transparency even with grants, um, with, with everything, uh, stands out. Um, and if, if the taxpayers of this school district want to know uh, those bills, then I guess it is a pain. Which is why I feel sorry for you. Um, but um, show it to them. Give it to them. If that's what they want to see, if that's what they want, then give it to them. There's nothing, if, there's nothing to be hidden here. I know that uh, Patricia, I mean, I have to say your last name, I apologize. Um, you've come in and you've taken on a complete mess. And uh, I know that uh, you know, the scrutiny has been put on you even harder uh, because of the pay, your pets and who you took over for. So while well, I understand that fis you know, fiscal transparency is, is absolute and it's an absolute must, I have to do it too. Um, I, I put out my agenda five days before. My board knows that if they want something on the agenda, they need to put it out five days before. Or if not, it's not getting on the agenda. If there's an addendum that needs to be made at the board meeting, then it's made. If not, well, we move on with business. Um, I'm just shocked uh, that some of you as, as, as board members don't look into those things. I know that I deal with uh, the, the finances of our organization, um, and there have been times where I have seen bills, and again, it's not two eyes on a set of bills. There's things that have gotten past me and there's things that I've also caught where going, that's not, that's not the case. Uh, that's not the cost of that bill. Errors happen. You know, you're, at the end of the day, there's a fiduciary responsibility that you have, not only to the employees, but the students, but also the taxpayer body. Um, another thing I came to is, is that my child has been one of uh, of, of bullying in a sense and again that has been taken up I did not know the process until tonight I'm glad I came I learned that process I learned something out of this tonight uh, how that process works and certainly I'll, I'll let that go through that channel I know that uh, uh, my child's mother has been in contact with the principal and again I'm not going to burden the board with that or you Mr. Cleaver but uh, certainly uh, we'll, we'll deal with that as, as need be. If we're not happy with that resolution, certainly I'll be back or I'll come see you personally. Um, as far as the, uh, the hazing incident and the child with the brain bleed, certainly I would hope that this board would uh, certainly um, take into consideration that those behaviors are not tolerated in the school district. We are, we are. Let me say that clear, let me say that loud, and let me say that proud. We are the best school district in this county, period. Whether we have a financial debt, whatever, this, the administration and teachers in this school district, we have proven time and time again, uh, and, and believe me, I've been out of school districts. Uh, the student body here is some of the phenomenal students. So don't let that deter you. Uh, that's not tolerable behavior and expulsion needs to happen. Um, I think a message needs to be sent by this board that expulsion needs to occur and end the conversation. Um, unless there's something else to it. Mr. Cleaver, in reference to the bomb threat on Thursday, I'm disappointed at the, at the, at the decision that you made. Um, I think you've heard my voice on that. I don't need to repeat myself on that. As far as the advertising of the psychologists, as I was sitting back there, a lot of it is, is that a lot of psychologists are actually going to the VA because of liability. Um, they, they're paying uh, upwards of $180,000 to $220,000 a year. So everyone is literally running, doctors are running to the VA because they don't have to pay malpractice insurance. Um, and that's where all of the practitioners are going. So if that gives you a little insight, I don't think the school district can compete at that price. Um, 
The final last thing I want to say is that I think really, I think one of the things that school districts should look at is a confidential pol confidentiality policy. My board members have a confidentiality policy, policy because we deal with veterans at times, um, and there's issues that are brought up before the board that I do discuss in detail, but it is clear, it is a clear policy that I remind uh, my board members that they are not uh, to discuss any of that information outside the board at all. Um, my understanding, I, I think, uh, one of, God rest his soul, I think he passed away now, but one of the school board members from Panther Valley had violated that policy, confidentiality policy, they took him to court and he was removed from the board, but if my memory serves me correct. I think you I think you may remember, recall what uh, I was referring to. Uh, Mickey Yonst. No. Yeah, Mickey Yonst. It was a lot more complicated than that. Okay. Um, they didn't remove them from the board, they couldn't remove them from the board. Oh, they didn't? Uh, but they could get a restraining order to prevent him from distributing okay. confidential information, but then they also had to give him the confidential, confidential information to begin with. Okay. So th there's a lot in that opinion. And yes, this is so. a government, not private. So there is a big difference between your government and a private. Oh, I, I, I absolutely understand that. But again, again, confidentiality policy signed by the, the by you know the board is still think you know gives you a little bit of, of teeth in the game, so to speak, um, with that. Mm -hmm. And certainly, um, if people are going to violate that, uh, certainly they need to be account held accountable at, at whatever means, particularly when you're dealing with the privacy of students. Um, Again, with between hearing about the uh, recent student, you know, committing suicide and the hazing incident, and this child being uh, tripped or whatever, I was not in here. I stepped out uh, when the mother was up here speaking. Uh, it's just heartbreaking. And again, that behavior is not uh, something that has ever been allowed in the school district. And certainly, I hope those that child, those, those students are held accountable um, to the highest uh, degree. Um, and that's all I have. That's all I have to say unless someone has questions. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for your service. Terry, Tammy, okay. Wilmer. Yes. I think Ryan covered a lot of pretty much everything here. Um, question to the board: In the event of a lawsuit filed against the Hyderabad School District. Where are the funds appropriated to satisfy the judgment against the school, should that be the case? If a lawsuit is scheduled as filed against the school district, we have insurance for those things. So at this point, the school district is, other than the student information. Well, it was just a question because I was wondering if the taxpayers were going to. As part of it, yes. The so there is line items in there that says lawyer fees and different things. So the taxpayers expect. Good. Um, are your employees, not just teachers, but cafeteria people, you know what I mean, maintenance people and that, are they all aware of the Whistleblowers Act? Are they all informed about that? Have they been educated? I'm trying, I'm, I'm not on because I, I can't say that I formally have given any Well, something needs to be done I, there. You need to educate your staff. Everyone's involved with this school. The school you mean the mandated reporter law? The whistleblowers act. In other words, if you see something, say something. If you hear something, say something. And they're protected by the when they say it, they're protected. And that's my point. I addressed you on this before, Mr. Right, but there is a presentation that we give to the to the entire staff beginning of the school year for everybody as part of opening day. And it addresses all the case law. The recording and whistleblower type, I believe, Mr. Filer is. Well, perhaps you need a professional to do this because I'm hearing complaints once again that several, whether it be teachers or staff members, uh, maintenance workers, are complaining that they are afraid to come forward with information pertaining to bullying and the hazing and the bomb threat as well. And I'm not saying bomb threat, I'm not, it, it was just that they were going to blow the school up. I don't know how they were going to do it. But these people are afraid to come forward because <laughs> according to what I'm being told, and we're probably going to have to do something legal to figure out if, this, if these accusations are true or not. And if need be, people that can't afford lawyers or what have you, will find a way to fund them, whether it's GoFundMe on Facebook or whatever. 
but something needs to be done because I'm to the understanding that you are a lot at blame or a lot at fault for telling these people, don't say anything or your job could be in jeopardy. Now, I'm not saying that it's a positive fact, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. First because of all, I do not have the authority to threaten anyone with their job. The well, board is the one who hires and fires. I can make a recommendation. No, well, that's beside your point. Right? Remember when Brian said how great it was to hire the right teacher? But what I'm saying is I can make a recommendation, but I can tell you that I have never turned anyone away when they have come and asked to see me. All I can say is they are in fear of losing their job because of what they are being told by yours truly. They, they should okay, and they all have representation. They're all yeah. I know all about that. Too. Yeah, and if they're not one of the cronies, snitches get stitches, or they lose their job, or you know what I mean. They're threatened. I'm just saying yeah, they're afraid, Mr. Cleaver. Well, should not be afraid. Well, and you're saying they shouldn't, but they are. You told me that last time, and it's still an issue. I'm not making it up. I'm not lying. I'm not there to hear it. But like I said, if need be, there'll be subpoenas issued or what have you. Because this is ridiculous. If somebody sees something that could prevent a student from being injured, or if they see something where a student is under a lot of pressure because he's being bullied, they need to say something. Not be, hey, keep it hush hot. And another thing I was to the understanding that it wasn't reported to the proper authorities about blowing the school up. I was to the understanding that you said get rid of it, make it go away. I don't know. I know. Again, that's not correct. Again, but we may have There's to There's a lot of things out there that is. You know, yeah, and I don't doubt that. There's half truth. And, well, but why, again, why wasn't the pro proper <coughs> protocol followed? I mean, obviously, you can't sit here and tell me that you are a professional to determine whether or not that was a legitimate bomb. I don't care if you talked to the person or not. They could have been in cahoots with someone else to plant a bomb. It could have been planted somewhere else in the building. And you would have never known until it blew up. And now there's dead people. Can you imagine? Could you live with that the rest of your life if that was even a smidgen of a possibility? Again, there's a lot of threats that there are smidges of You can't, you know, but you got to take them all serious. We do. Every, you didn't. You didn't call in the dogs. Dogs can smell that stuff. That person, yeah, you talk to them. You think they're going to tell you everything? A lot of times students do come forward with a lot of information. Well, I'm, I'm just sorry that you didn't take more, take more serious and, and that it, 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 this could be for real, you know, because you're, you're assuming or talking to them and taking their word for it. It could have been extremely costly. Thank God it wasn't. But maybe the next one will. You know? And these kids are repeated offenders. Somebody's sticking up for these kids, and I don't think it's just the parents. I think these kids are being protected through favoritism and nepotism. That was the case when I was a kid, not to this degree. We didn't have these incidents. But if your dad was somebody, you got a high quarterback on the knee high football team. If your dad wasn't somebody and you were a nobody, you ended up blocking for the other. It's all favoritism and nepotism, way back, and it's continuing. These repeated offenders, you can't tell me that there shouldn't be court actions taken against them already to have them expelled. Not just one. It was mentioned that there's one bad guy in the bunch. There's a bunch of them. And this hazing thing, that's, it's, it's just unacceptable, totally unacceptable. But from what I understand, they got 10-day suspensions. You got to use them as an example. It sucks, but hey, that's just the way it is. Ten day suspensions out of examples? Is that no. That's I, not, that's I, too lenient. No, no, no. no, 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 no. If I had something to say about it doing it, they'd be in a juvie detention home, and that's where they receive their diploma. Four years in that home. If you were the that that that's, that's a sexual offense. That's a felony. Okay. Again, again the police are just, we can't press charges with that. There's hazy statutes that they have to follow. That is all turned over to the all the information we have, we have no authority to do any type of charges. Mr. Cleaver, there is one question that I do have. So, the start of this incident to the time there is for the expulsion here, the due process here, okay? To me, it would make sense unless there's a statute that says that you can't go over a certain period of time. Are, are, they, are, they, are they suspended 
Can they be suspended until that period of time? No, to let Mr. Filer answer, because there's a lot of legal. I wish I could give you a bright line answer that if this, then this. But as it stands, every case has to be addressed on an individual basis. For a hypothetical instance, let's say you and I got into a fight. Okay? And it was a really bad one, lots of injuries, and everyone's hurt. If you would have an IEP and I don't, I can be suspended for more than 10 days. If you have an IEP, we can't even suspend, we can only suspend you in total for 10 days throughout the entire year. I can't give you a, a bright line test of when expulsions can be done, what can be done, and when, without knowing all the facts of all the cases, and without knowing all the background of the kids. So it's a lot more complicated than there was clearly something wrong done, why is he not expelled? There was a lot of factors that go into play. So, <laughs> uh, don't, don't, it sounds ridiculous. I know what you're. My dog is like getting the floor right now going, wait a minute, if you have an IEP, if you have an IEP, you can only be held accountable for 10 days to return to school. Throughout the entire year. To your due process hearing, and then determined otherwise by the school board. And then you have a right to appeal so that you can still be in the school for another year, year and a half. It does run all the way to the US uh, PA Supreme Court. No, no, what, I, what I'm telling you is that the most I can kick you out if you have an IEP would be 10 days. Yeah. Even if they murder somebody. If they murder somebody, they're getting charged at the district attorney's office. Yeah, exactly. Well, which is separate from the school district. A sexual okay, so offense that, is pretty, that's pretty bad. That's what, again, there's, again, that case is being investigated. The district attorney's office is handling that. They were notified the day we were notified. The and the district attorney, the district attorney recommended but I understand, us. mom works at the magistrate's office, so. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. I don't, it, I don't it, it's too that. much. I mean, these kids are being covered for work, and you're, you're going to find out one day, and, and it's very extreme circumstance, or, or what I'm about to say, you could be raised in a serial killer. Does this not raise to the level after all these instances and all these things that have gone on? Does this not raise enough to the to the level of of the school board members and, and maybe you, Mr. Cleaver, going to our state rep and state senator and saying we have problems? We we don't. There's there's too much of a safety net here um, that we're putting rent, we're putting students in more harm than can, can I address that? Because a lot of problems could be addressed if we go to our state senators. The IEP is a federal statute, so you need to go to your U.S. senators and U.S. representatives because you want to change it. Now, it's, there's so many interlining laws, and this one in particular is federal. Well, Mark, you had mentioned that notice of information and sharing information. Our board was first told of this the day that the Administration says they first heard of it, which was December 4th. So, <coughs> if anyone has information that our district was told prior to December 4th that these things were happening or stuff was taking place, they should really file a complaint with the district and make sure they carbon copy the entire board if anything predated December 4th. I just heard November or some dates. That's what I was hearing. Yeah, no, so. That's the problem. Everybody's hearing things. Correct. Uh, it's it's social point. media blew everything totally out of proportion and I don't know if that's absolutely ridiculous. Social media is not proportion. It is. It's out of proportion. Absolutely. I'm hearing that the room says. Where those kids? Was my side booing the victim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
should also recognize it. How is this gap left in the system? How is it left? And he's a repeated offender, at least one. Yeah, the, the, the gap of time between when the kids are supervised and well. How did that happen? Okay. 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 Did you want to say something? Or? Oh, okay. I saw it. I saw it. Again. Thank you. Uh, no, I just wanted to mention one thing. What we'll do is a uh, I'm scared of something to believe in the earlier on in the year. And I, I very rarely get a phone call from anybody that's within the school, even though I have some friends. <clears throat> and I was happened to be at the Shell station by the turnpike, and I get this phone call saying that there's a bomb threat in the school. All right, so I went, holy cow. Serious? Serious. I said, okay. So I'm getting a sandwich, uh, you know, from Subway. I walk outside, and there's two Franklin policemen sitting in their car eating lunch. Knock on the window. And I told them, I said, you know what, I just got a phone call from someone at the school, and they're telling me, here's the phone, if you want this, we got a bomb threat. And I'm expecting some concerns. So they look at me and they said, well, okay, was this called and that got called? I said, wait a minute. I said, I just got a phone call. I said, there was a bomb in one of the other schools in the country had something earlier on, just you know, within months or, or weeks. So I'm thinking, you know, you, you get in your car and you go check it the hell out. These are the guys with the shields and with a gun. And I told them that. And they said, well, no, it's out of our district. And I looked at them, too, and I said, I know you're effing kidding me. You know, and of course, the one guy got upset. I said, I don't give a shit. I said, you know what? You're the guys with the shield and the gun. And somebody at the school is calling, and I'm telling you, I don't get phone calls like this. There's something going on. Why don't you go just check it out? And he said, well, we can't check it out because it's out of our district, and you have to go call, uh, go see the state police up on 209. And I looked at them, and I said, you are kidding me. I said, you know, we both know we're all here. If you two really don't care, and you're being paid to defend everybody, and supposedly, right, take care of our children, I don't really give a shit. Because what am I going to do? All right? And I want to know. So basically, what you have, it's the entire system that's broke. It's not just here. They got their own problems. The state has a problem. <coughs> Our townships have a problem. I mean, you know, when voting time comes, you know, I'm out there all the time, and it's not that I'm against certain individuals, I'm against the way that certain individuals think, all right? And it's up to the voters to replace everyone that they think is wrong. And of course, we, everybody in this town votes on family, friends, and, and neighbors. And, and it's not just here on the school board, it's anywhere else. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Adjourned at 1041. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you coming and bringing some of these issues to uh, light.